Call the meeting of the North Reading School Committee to order for June 19th. First order of business, public input. I can pretty much guess we don't have anybody here to provide public input unless Cindy or Dan or AJ or Kathy or Jason want to make public input. No, I don't think any of them do. <laughs> and here's Mr. Buckley. <laughs> you have now taken hey, over the Jack. late person. <laughs> I mean, uh, but we might just would have run in, but it would have been really there. So, do we have public input? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So next, will you? the record. What time is it? All right. Okay. <laughs> next, we uh, move to the student report, and we no longer have student reports until September. Correct. Correct. September 25th. I September 25th. The first one. And we'll have new, uh, several new students next year. Correct. We do. We have four new students, and then Jerlyn Kaya and Michael Tyrell will be back. Okay. Next, continue business. Uh, MSBA SSBC. So I had indicated I did not have a lot new to report to you, although I did receive an email today, and I have a feeling that um, from Joanna Cripp from Gilbain with a status report on some of the punch list items, and quite honestly, it's 17 pages, and I have not reviewed it um, in enough detail to, to speak about it um, tonight, but I, did, I, I wanted to acknowledge that it was received mm -hmm. today and that I would expect it would probably be a subject of discussion um, at the SSBC meeting tomorrow. But a couple of things that I did think were, um, were important enough to pull out is that there is supposed to be, as you know, we're preparing for the, um, the mandrel pull, the grinding of the road, the paving and such, and that there is a meeting scheduled, um, I, I, I gather from this email, with, um, um, with Dow, the company that's um, done the drainage work to, um, to review the plan so that they can be kept up to speed on the schedule as well. But uh, beyond that, <clears throat> um, I think I would prefer to wait until um, the meeting is, is, is held tomorrow on the Secondary School Building Committee without speaking in any detail about the, the updates to any remaining punch list items. So we, we don't have a date. Do we have a date yet for the Mandrel poll or sometime? Yes, it is uh, June 26th, I believe. Okay. Yeah. A week from Thursday. today. Right. Yeah. No, so it's, um, oh, no, no, you're right. it's next Monday, I believe, right, right. the 26th. And then the paving and such is scheduled with the grinding first on July 20th, 20th and 21st. Any other questions? As John said, we have a uh, NSSBC meeting tomorrow. Correct. So, <clears throat> five thirty. Right. In our meeting in July, we should have much more of an update, and hopefully, we're getting. I, uh, I think July and August are going to be, you know, pretty important months. To we're marching bring along this to a close. Marching well, along toward closing the project. Correct. They yeah. pretty much have a due date of the fifteenth. <clears throat> August fifteenth. Correct. Know, right. right. Is there any pre-meeting tomorrow? No. No. Nothing scheduled. No. It's five thirty. And there was an email from Chuck Arucci today that did not indicate, okay. just a reminder that, didn't, that did not indicate a pre-meeting. Okay, next uh, we have the school improvement plans and we have Mr. LaPrette and Ms. O'Connell from the high school and the middle school. Is Kathy gonna go first? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. So I just wanted to first introduce, they're not here tonight, but my school improvement team for the 2016-2017 school year. The teacher representatives were Carla Lister and Jean Walsh. The community representative was Amy Luckowitz, and my two parent representatives were Sandy Garnis and Linnea Casino. And I appreciate all of their help and guidance as we worked to implement the 2015-16 school improvement plan as well as to write this plan. Highlights from this past year, and I just have to say publicly again, our building is absolutely amazing. We're very lucky every day that I walk through the halls, especially in this warm weather and, and the building is comfortable, 
The technology is outstanding. The students are happy. The teachers are just feeling like they, they finally have a middle school that is truly 21st century. So I just want to say again, thank you to the school committee and thank you to the town of North Reading for this amazing building. It's, it's truly a blessing. Other highlights are implementing year two of MTSS. MTSS is an acronym for the Massachusetts Tiered System of Support. It's uh, intervention time. So we were able to offer academic support for students performing below grade level in math, reading, executive functioning, which is educational jargon for organization, which is key in adolescent development, study skills, and resiliency. This year we offered a kind of a grit uh, intervention working with students around their self-esteem and goal setting so that's something that we're very proud of and that we implemented in the second year of additionally we conducted iReady diagnostic testing in math and reading in the previous year in 2015-16 we only used iReady for math and this year we introduced it for reading and I'm sure you're, the school committee is a bit familiar with the iReady tool, but it provides instant feedback. So when the student submits their test, it immediately tells you where they are performing, at what, at what grade level they are performing, and if they are below grade level, exactly where in that grade they are performing and what standards they need work on. It's a, it's a pretty amazing tool. So again, this year we implemented that in math and reading, pre and post, in September and June. Additionally, this past year, we implemented the first year of a PBIS framework, which is another fancy acronym. PBIS stands for Positive Behavior Intervention and Support. So just like in the second bullet, we focus a lot on academic interventions. The PBIS initiative focuses on the social-emotional piece. And we continued with our social-emotional learning lessons once a month. We call them care days, so once a month. We had a social emotional lesson that was created by a team of teachers and school psychologists. And we, this year, for the first time, we inc included a mindfulness component. So just like any regular lesson, there was, there's a warm up, an activator, a hook kind of for these social emotional lessons. And this year we used mindfulness as that hook. So like a three to five minute, just de-stressing uh, kind of calming exercise to set the tone for the social emotional lessons that we did monthly. Additionally, we had our amazing Alice in Wonderland performance, our award no nominated, I think the awards are coming out soon for uh, the middle school production, so we were nominated for several awards. We had our winter and spring concerts, our March Madness basketball tournament, a terrific talent show. We, we have some amazingly talented students who are brave and, and just put it all out there on the stage. Again, sh highlighting the Performing Arts Center. It's such a great <coughs> place, such a wonderful uh, forum to have these activities. We also had a Geography and History B, and this year the History B was first year in a long time that we've participated, and our students actually made it. Three students traveled to Atlanta, Georgia, to compete nationally. Uh, one sixth grader and two eighth graders competed in the History B. And as a former history teacher and History Day uh, winner when I was in middle school, I think it's just wonderful that we have students that are interested in this type of activity and teachers, Mrs. Jones runs those uh, two activities. Have, we have teachers who are willing to help and champion those students. Our Washington DC trip just, just ended. Everyone came back, everyone had a great time. They, they arrived back Friday, early Friday evening. Later on tonight you'll hear a, a brief presentation by Mr. Maloney requesting your the school committee's approval to again go on that trip for the 2018 school year. We've used a, a new company this year and we were very pleased overall, extremely pleased with the service and safety they provided and part of their program is to get uh, fundraising and things going early because typically we come to you in, in the fall to ask for, re, for your permission. They are already asking us to get the ball rolling and to begin thinking about the 2018 trip, which is why we're coming tonight to talk to you. Mike Maloney will be here. We have a field day scheduled for our sixth and seventh graders down on the turf on Wednesday morning. It's a traditional kind of old school home, by homeroom. The students go through different types of activities and then it ends with grade level tug of war. It's fun kids enjoy it and then we walk back up uh, for lunch. And then Legacy Day is a, a celebration of the eighth grade accomplishment of moving on and, and graduating from middle school and that day is Wednesday morning. Art begins on Wednesday morning with a, an award ceremony and a certificate of completion for all students leaving 
grade eight, and then they, they have a wonderful day filled with a, a, a very small uh, address by their, for most of them, their new principal, A.J. LaPrette. They also receive their memory book. There's an eighth grade video, a catered lunch from, sponsored by our PTO, and an afternoon of uh, opportunity to go to various different activities run by teachers. All of that's happening on, on Wednesday, June 21st. And then I, I also just wanted to mention that I co-facilitated a mindfulness study group for teachers at the middle school and high school with Jess Buckley and, and her intern. Um, can't think of the, her interns. Julie. Julie, what, I couldn't think of her last name. Uh, so Jess Buckley and I and Julie ran a mindfulness study group with 12 teachers who volunteered from the middle school and high school to participate. It was a great opportunity. We read the, the book Growing Up Mindful and we talked about ways that we could incorporate mindfulness activities into our own personal lives and into our work with students. And it was a great success. And then uh, this year in the seventh grade, we piloted a Chromebook cart-based pilot where every seventh grade content area teacher had a cart in their classroom all day long to use to implement technology in, mean, in a meaningful way. This is different than what the other grades had been doing is that you would sign up to take the cart to your room. And if any of you have ever taught I taught for 10 years. It, it, what you think you're going to do on next Tuesday is ultimately not what you do on next Tuesday. And so with the calendar model, you have to sign out the cart and say, okay, I'm going to take it to my classroom on Tuesday with great intentions of doing a, you know, a meaningful, wonderful activity. But it's very challenging with students. You're constantly adjusting your, your instruction and reviewing or going back to something or, or moving faster than you anticipated. So having the Chromebooks in their classroom was a wonderful way to get them to really change their teaching and to implement the technology at any moment. They didn't have to you know, go sign out a cart. So that was a really great opportunity. And I know we were here last week, uh, Dr. Downs and Dr. Daly were here to talk about the next steps in, in technology for the 2017-18 school year. So those are just some highlights from this past year. My goals for this year that the team helped me write are uh, focused initially on teaching and learning as part of NRPS 2021. I arranged my school improvement plan based on the district's goals. So under the heading of teaching and learning, my biggest concern and, and where I've put a, a lot of effort this year is improving those MCAS scores. So we will be looking at the preliminary data as soon as it becomes available from the spring of 2017 and setting our goals to improve the SGP, the student growth percentile, in all of the tested subjects, in English, which is the first goal, in science, which is the second goal, and in math, which is the third goal. But just to speak to science for a moment, we, this past year, it continued our implementation of the new science standards. So in 15, 16, we implemented the new science standards into grade six, and then in 16, 17, we implemented them into grade seven, and then in 17, 18, we'll implement them into grade eight which will coincide very nicely with the changes in the test for 2018. Next spring, there will be a, a hybrid where the, the new science standards will be integrated into the test. So we feel very prepared for that and actually participated two weeks ago in uh, just a tryout of some of those new types of questions based on the new standards, computer-based. So we, we focused a lot this year on improving our science scores, and I'm really hopeful that we will see the results of that with the spring, uh, the spring data when it becomes available. So then goal four, as you know, I asked last year for permission to check the climate levels at the middle school, and now that has become or is an, a district goal for all schools to check the climate levels. So we did administer a climate instrument to students and staff in 2016. We gathered those results and we you know, looked at them quite a bit at the, in my leadership team and as a faculty and with the PBIS team around the social emotional piece for students and we administered the climate same scale again this year and I just actually today got the results so I haven't had a chance to look at them but it's nice to use the same tool it's different students because we you know our eighth graders last year moved on but same staff 
two grades of the same students to see any trends and patterns. Typically, we say it takes three years of data to really say that there's a, a pattern or, or a trend. But just having the two years, I'm excited to look at the new 2017 data. And again, climate, if, if you are not aware, it can be thought of as how people feel when they come to school, students and staff. Are they, do they feel safe emotionally and physically? Do they feel that they are able to collaborate with colleagues and peers? Do they feel that there are rules in place to keep them safe and able to uh, learn at a high level? So all of that is part of goal number four. And then the second strand whoops, is technology integration, which is part of the NRPS 2021. So we are working very closely, as you know, with Dr. Dr. Downs to implement, to help implement the district's instructional technology plan. And I, I feel like we, we're, we're working very hard and have some great ideas for the fall with the one-to-one -one pilot for our will-be seventh graders and then moving that CART model to the eighth grade. And I, I feel confident that we are doing the very best we can to allow teachers to learn. And it, it, I wanted to say last Monday night that it's, there are two types of changes when you think about change, and particularly in a school, there are technical changes, which are the logistical operational things, and then there are adaptive changes, which is really transformative, how you change the way you do things every day. And I think our teachers have been really great about both pieces in the seventh grade. They're changing technically, by implementing the the Chromebooks, by adjusting to now a you know a new kind of way to have the students bring them home every night, but that's just the technical piece. That's that's the logistical piece. They've been extra, you know, I think wonderful at changing the way they teach. That's the adaptive piece, changing their whole approach, their whole pedagogical approach to incorporate the technology in a meaningful way. So it's one thing to have a Chromebook and just use it for word processing, but they're doing so much more than that. And part of that is taking advantage of the digital learning specialists that we have. And again, I thank the school committee for supporting that. But teachers get nervous. Again, I taught for 10 years. You want to use technology, but you're afraid something's not going to work. You, you want to create this lesson, but you're not exactly sure what technology is out there to help you do that. So we have great digital learning specialists who push into classrooms. I, I see a lot of you know, co-teaching where the digital learning specialist is there to offer technical assistance and to help the kids with the technical piece, but the teacher's there to offer the content expertise, and it, it's just, it's great. It extends into our librarian. I know that in January she, or February, she was here to present for our middle school presentation to you, and I think you saw some of the great things our librarian, Lauren Walton, has been able to do. So that's our first technology goal. We've been trying in the second one to make ourselves part of the school, and we bump into the high school all the time, and I think AJ and I have done a nice job of sharing the spaces, but we try to get, we try to get them in, the middle school kids into all of the spaces. I, I'm so pleased with our video production uh, class this year. I wish Dr. Daly were here because he and I had the opportunity to go down to the television studio last month and see a live broadcast where the kids were, I mean, it looked like News Center 5 to me, and it was just every, every piece of equipment was on, and these are middle school kids, and they're, you know, they're switching the green screen, and they just, it was great to see that room being utilized, so I'm, I'm very pleased to have the video production course. Going back to science for a few minutes, one of the things that I wanted to work on with our eighth grade science teachers to help with the test scores was a, a, a real intensive review. If you know, with, with science, it's, it's tested at fifth grade and eighth grade, in, in high school obviously too, but so the kids learn sixth grade and seventh grade science, but they're not tested until eighth grade. So that's a lot of information to hold on to and process. So this year we did a very formal review of sixth and seventh grade in here. So the two eighth grade classes came in here, each, you know, each block. The two eighth grade science teachers co-taught together some of the, just a real uh, nice opportunity to use this space to have 50 to 60 kids in here, almost like a college level class with two teachers. So we, we do try to use the space as much as possible. And again, I said earlier, I'm just so grateful to have these spaces and I want you to know that we are using them. And then third, we are continue to, continuing to prepare for the administration of the computer-based tests. This year, eighth grade was tested on the Chromebooks in math and English. From a logistical perspective, everything went very well. We were extremely supported by our digital learning staff. I was very nervous about that technical piece of having everything be on the computer, but it, it 
I don't think it could have gone smoother technically. We haven't seen the results yet, but we will be continuing to, because that's the way that, that's where the state is heading, to have the computer-based testing. So we'll be continue, continuing to work with our digital learning staff and our students to get used to taking tests on the computer. And I, I don't know the last time you took a test, any of you, but the last time I took a test, it was on, you know, it was paper and pencil. So to, for kids, even our current kids who are native technology users, they're used to paper and pencil tests. So to switch over to computer, there's, there's a change there for them, for their thinking, and to remind them that even though you're doing it on the computer, you still need to use scratch paper to, show, to, to figure out your calculations. That kind of write a rough draft or, or write out you know, a graphic organizer. It's still important for them to know that they, although they're putting their answers on the computer, they can still use paper to do the kind of the processing. And then our last area is student support services. This again ties with NRPS 2021. I've already mentioned the, the Massachusetts Tiered System of Support. That is designed to support all students, but especially those students who are not performing at grade level. It's, you know, it's trying to get everybody up to grade level and beyond. So we con are continuing to implement that. We're also continuing to implement the social emotional learning curriculum. And then I think most importantly, last year, we really made a strong effort to, to ensure that our programming met the needs of all of our middle school students. So we had some special education programs, two in particular, that were transitioning from the elementary schools. And we made sure, we worked really hard to make sure that those were seamless transitions for those students. We worked hard to keep students in district and to create the programs at the middle school that we needed to, to ensure that the students had their needs met and that we were able to, to keep them here. So that's a very important part of the grade five to six transition to ensure that there is a continuum of service for students, whatever they're receiving for special education services at the elementary level, we need to work to ensure that that continues at the middle school level. And it's, it's sometimes a bit tricky because of the, just the, the sheer difference in schedules that an elementary school has compared to a middle school. And I think that's it. Yes, that's it. I tried to be brief. Oh, questions for? Happy, happy to answer questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Julie? The MTS, MTSS, I know a little bit about it from my son. How do the sections get developed for those students who are not requiring those extra supports? So for students who are performing at grade level who do not need an academic intervention, we ask our science and social studies teachers to put together enrichment, okay. en enrichment programs that are aligned to the standards. The, the, the first thing is that they have to be aligned to either the science or social studies standards. And then we have co-teachers. We use our general arts teachers to work with the, the content area teachers, science and social studies to make sure that what, what the kids are doing is meaningful and engaging, but connects to the curriculum. And that happens, how often does that occur? It started in October this year, and we had eight sessions in October, once a week for 45 minutes. And then again in January, once a week for 45 minutes for another eight sessions. And then we had three in May. So about 20 session, 20, 45 minute sessions. But the idea behind it w wouldn't be that the students would stay for all 20 sessions in one subject matter. You'd be progress monitoring to see, ideally, you want to get them to grade level and, pu and push them out. And if we are ever at a point, and it would be a principal's dream, where everyone were performing at grade level, they, we, we wouldn't need to have the interventions. But this is, it's a time during the day to capture the kids with the certified teachers to deliver the intervention. And, and just to add to that, the students who are identified, it's based on the previous year's state test scores and also the iReady diagnostic. Okay. So we can look at two, two different pieces of data. We can also look at if they're current students, their end of year grades in those subjects okay. to use you know, nice triangulation of data to ensure that we're identifying the right kids for the interventions. Jerry or Scott? Jerry? Scott. <coughs> Yes, so, <laughs> so my only question was just about foreign language and a lot of this is just because I don't exactly know how it all works but it was mentioned that there's an exploratory class in seventh grade that's only one semester so does every student have to take it in with, seventh grade? With few exceptions okay yes and then so if we were because I know the school committee has been on the record about wanting to increase the foreign language 
offerings. And so if it, if it were to increase to another grade, I was trying to understand exactly how it works with no bells and everything, like the sixth and seventh grade have different schedules than the eighth grade. Would there be any concerns about reducing, you know, going to a, adding another period to if we were to be able to afford to add foreign language full time, you know, in the seventh grade? Would there, is that something that would, would, would be a huge change to the other classes in, in seventh grade or? The, the other content area classes would be, there would be a reduction in their time. So right now they meet math, English, science, and social studies in the sixth and seventh grade meet for approximately 60 minutes. In the eighth grade, because they have a full-time foreign language, the academic classes meet for 50, five, zero minutes. So that is something to take into consideration. There's, there's no concern with I mean, there's certainly concern with losing that instructional time, but they would be gaining it with the foreign language exposure. There's no concern on my end from a scheduling adjustment because it would just be the eighth, they would follow the eighth grade schedule. It would be it would be easier in 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 some regards because it would just be a duplicate pretty much of the eighth grade schedule. Just just to follow up on that though, since they have the exploratory now, wouldn't if we put a full time or is that only once a week or how, how does that work? The exploratory meets every other day for one semester, and ideally we would push that into sixth grade. Right. It, but what I'm saying is they, they're already meeting for exploratory, so some of that time they're already taking a foreign language. So we would just replace the exploratory with, if we had a full-time course on three of those days, it's, yeah, it's probably not as long, though, right? Yeah, and it's, it's not at that. I, do, I hate to get into the craziness of the middle school schedule. The exploratory is not at the same time as the academic classes are. It's during the general arts oh, rotation. Okay. okay. So it's sort of in its own I got you. schedule. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I had a couple questions I'll, in not specifically related to the um, school improvement plan, but related obviously to the middle school. A couple things we did last year. Um, we added a school psychologist. I just wanted to get some feedback from you, hoping that's helped with the social emotional learning and the and the other things. And then, um, I don't, is this our second year with no leveling except for math? And I just wanted to see if there was any update on how, how that's progressing. Sure. So the, the first question I anticipated that perhaps I might be asked, and I'm very pleased to say that I do think from a data perspective we have seen a positive outcome of having a third school psychologist in that this is my sixth year, I'm finishing my sixth year as the principal and the five previous years, unfortunately we have had hospitalizations for students mm -hmm. due to social emotional, lack of social emotional well-being and this year we had zero. Excellent. So can you make that cause and effect? I'm, I'm not sure but that is a variable that played into it and I think I often found that our school psychologists were able to see a lot of kids and, and be proactive and go to a lot of team meetings and talk to teams about students that they were concerned about that were on the, you know, the be showing the beginning signs of crisis and try to get to that immediately and contact the parents, have the parents come in, create an action plan and prevent students from escalating to the point where they need to be hospitalized. So that's one piece of data. I think that if we look at school avoidance, although that you know we certainly st we still have students who suffer from school avoidance, I f I believe that the data would show that those numbers have gone down. The number of students who are uh, uncomfortable coming to school that this year the cases of that are fewer. So those two pieces of data to me would say that it's definitely right. been a positive. As far as the leveling goes, this is the first year that the current eighth graders are the ones who have never been leveled for any subject other than math. Mm -hmm. So we need to still obviously look at state data. It takes three years to look at it, look at trends and see if you know if we're noticing anything in that area. I mean, I personally feel that it's the right decision. I still feel strongly that it was the right decision. It's it's a best practice for mid, for middle school education to heterogeneously group students. I feel that the teachers again have made an adapt. That's an adaptive change to go from homogeneously grouping, you know, where you have levels of students in your class to mixing them all together and having to meet all of their needs. But I'm confident and and I I'm confident that it was the right decision and we'll have to wait to see the data, to look at the data, to see if the data meaning the state data to see if we see differences in student achievement. What I would like to see and what my what my thoughts were and, and, and what the historical data would show for other schools is that the lower achieving students 
would rise up when they're not tracked. That's what the studies would tell you. That's what the research says, that those students would, their achievement levels would increase and that the higher achieving students typically remain high achieving students. It doesn't typically change their achievement levels, but it's, it's a little premature yeah. to be able to look at that. And I'm not gonna get into this now, but I think as a district, as a state, um, we just don't do enough with gifted and talented programs. So um, we'd have maybe after school, before school things for gifted and talented students where if parents or they, the kids themselves, felt they weren't getting challenged enough in school, we could have other things for them. And I know we try to do that, but we don't. I know we don't have a formal gifted and talented program in the district, so. Well, one thing about having the MTSS block in place, having that, that block that I've kind of established now is something that we do we really designed it to meet the needs of students not at grade level. But because it's in place now, and we can use the state testing data, so if we look at kids that are placing consistently advanced, if we look at the iReady data and they're consistently performing above grade level, we have a structure in place now where we could potentially ask teachers to go the other way and work with the kids to support them. That's. I mean, you're probably not familiar with DeFore, but he's a, a, a famous writer about education best practices, and he talks about what do you want students to know and learn? What do you, how are you gonna know if they learned it? What are you gonna do if they don't? But the fourth question that really never gets answered is what if they already know it? What are you right. gonna do? So we have put this schedule in place that is this once a week, 45 minute block that currently is not being used that way, but there really is no reason why it couldn't be. I just, my, my effort and all my time is focused on the kids that are not performing at grade level, but I certainly could now f consider adding in, you know, maybe an advanced science course or, or during that time for those students who, it would have to be based on data. I think it's it, definitely it, something we should we should think about yeah. at all levels. Yeah. Jerry, do you have anything? Yeah. Kathy, not so much questions, but comments. Um, again, I wanna congratulate you and AJ on the use of the shared spaces. Um, it seems like for the two years that the middle school's been open that it's been seamless. I'm sure there's been some glitches, but we haven't heard about them. So if we haven't heard about them, they haven't happened, okay? Um, but I, I think you guys have done a great job. I know that was an issue when we were designing the school, when we were building the school, and it seems to have worked out really, really well. And it, I think it um, is some justification there for the way we built the school with the shared spaces. Um, I'm also uh, pleased to see that you a big emphasis on improving test scores. Uh, I think that's important. I know some people would disagree with me on that, but I think that's very important. Uh, I'm glad that you um, implemented the video production class um, because the use of that space, again, uh, helps justify you know, the, the design of the school and the things that we put into that. But um, um, how many kids participated in that particular class this year? I, c I could give you the number after when I go back. But okay, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just yeah. curious as to... I, I would say conservatively 300 students over the course really? of the year, but I can get the exact number that, that's great. to John. That's great. And yeah, and the, the class we saw were eighth graders. And again, I'm sure you know that Patrick has obviously a technology background. He, right. in Waltham, did a lot of the, the video production work. And he, he just, he, when he saw what they were doing, he was just awestruck. He really? said, Kathy, cause, because being a, just a layman, I, I, it looked cool. He said, Kathy, you, th what they are doing is at such high level. When they get to the high school, they can, they're going to be wow. able to fly. Those were eighth graders. So now you know we're going to be sending the high school students who know how to use the equipment and hopefully Allison Kane can you know down the road talk with AJ about increasing the video production yeah. offerings I know there's one course but perhaps if there's a need uh, increasing to more I'm pleased just to hear that the stuff works I mean I yeah. didn't know if they put it, it down works. there and you know whether or not we had to turn it on or what we had to do so um, and I think I think that's pretty much the, the only other thing again I was I was pleased to hear you say how well everything was working in the school I know you're not the type to complain, so I think if there's anything that isn't working well, you'd let John know. And to hear that the teachers have adjusted and are happy, um, that's really refreshing. So it's a long road. Uh, yeah, I, you know. believe me. Yes, know. Believe me, I, I heard it, and I didn't yeah. kill anybody, but yeah. I, I heard what was yeah. being said. So I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. hoping everybody's adjusted. That's that's good news. Yeah, it's a remarkable yeah, school. When we have yeah, visitors come for whatever reason, they just can't get over the, the infrastructure. It's absolutely Julie, beautiful. Julie, you have something else? That's it. I had a couple more things. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, and I wasn't able to make the performance live, but someone posted on Facebook a performance that the middle school, um, of the middle school chorus, 
and I was absolutely blown away. I, the the talent, um, we've come, we've always had you know good quality talent, good quality chorus drama. But what I saw five, six, seven years ago, <laughs> there's no comparison. It was, it was un. Heard. What I well saw I and heard <laughs> yes, but it was unbelievable. Yeah. Car Carla Lister. I mean, Carla. Yes, she's, it was. She's done an amazing job. It, the, the, it was just beautiful. And um, back to the serious stuff, science. It's, that test has been an issue statewide in terms of scores. Do you think it's the same reason because the students are taking the courses in the sixth and seventh grade and then the test isn't administ administered until the end of the eighth grade? Well, I, when I taught, I, ta I taught history, and it was the same thing. So I, I, it's history, when it was tested, right. was tested at, at those same grade levels. And it's very difficult for students to retain that information over the course of three years. Yeah. But I'm just really hopeful that with the new standards and with the new approach to testing students that we'll see better results. I feel like we got on top of it early. I, in talking with Dr. Daly, you know, we really, I think, planned out integrating the new standards very well and timed it with the new tests. So I'm just, I'm, I've spent a long time talking to, to Mr. Bernard about improving those scores and I, and I feel like we're, we're getting there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's critical that, yeah. that we do that, I know that. And the last question I have is actually, it really goes to Michael and John too. And when I, when I see the enrollment and it's down to next year, it looks like 553 I think is the number. So, you know, I'm not one to, look for cutting staff. But when I start to see numbers like that, I wonder two things. Is that a trend or is that just because that sixth grade class coming in is so small and that's an anomaly? It's 543 actually. And then um, if it's not an anomaly, are we getting close to a point where we can take staff from one school and you know, if we need someone at the high school, we can actually put someone at the high school. I, I, don't, I don't know what the, what the critical numbers are, though. I can offer an answer, but I, I think if we believe strongly, which I, I think we do, clearly, and, and I'm sure others, in the, in the team model mm -hmm. and having licensed teachers teaching in their academic areas, then I think maintaining the structure we have with the staff we have is important. Otherwise, we would run the risk of reducing staff where you might now have a teacher in, who's licensed in math maybe having to teach some science classes. We did have, didn't a couple of years ago we reduced, didn't we have extra teachers that, was we, it the sixth grade? It was the time or? when we had study periods. No, but we had, we reduced some teachers, yeah, we, didn't we? We did, we? but we, did we, we half, reduced, two and a half years ago. when I first came on, I believe there had been an addition of two teachers due to the the class that is right. now going to be seniors. Right. We had 243 students exactly. just in that class. Right. So when I came on my first year, I believe there were two additional teachers added or, or soon thereafter added, but we've since reduced those two teachers right. because of the reduction. I guess and the only question I'm getting at is, or the only point I'm trying to get at is, is there, a, is there a number where we can say, well, we don't need, I know we have two teams at each grade, right. so I guess you'd have to get down to a number of about 75 80 kids before you could reduce the team. Yeah, I mean, the, or or 100. I mean, the the right. best practice would be less than 100 on a team. Because that's basically 25 right. per class. If I'm not mistaken, the following year the population. Yeah, so I, that's what I. Yeah, that's bump up so too. Some of the projections show so we're about 575 right now, 577 might go down to like mid 530s next year. Mm -hmm. Then it might stay at that for a couple of years, but then it's kind of kind of level off, go back up to the. 550 the mid <coughs> and I know at the hood there's kind of like one less fifth grade class oh. right so that's oh, this like year? 25 30 kids yeah. right there for yeah. one of the elementary schools it's not so a it's not a permanent age. it's only yeah. a couple of years and then it's going to okay. start to tweak back up okay and kind of level in yeah. the 550s no, yeah. so Scott you have anything else yeah I, I have one comment and in, in a question so the comment is just simple I mean I have just been thoroughly impressed with this is O'Connell from afar for a while but it seems like at the middle school, a lot of things are piloted. A lot of things are changed. New testing begins there. And, you know, you're continuously trying to make changes, which I appreciate. You know, you tried the Wonder Book a couple of years ago. You've, I know with the leveling and the tracking, you haven't been afraid to make changes at times. And so just in general, I feel like in the middle school, a lot of, you have elementary coming in and it's a, it's a very important stage. And I've just been very impressed from afar and I haven't been on the committee for long but with some of the changes and how easily you've dealt with it and your leadership over, over some of these issues. And so I just wanted to say that while Thank you're you. presenting your, your plan. 
And then my, my question is on the special education. You talk about the three specialized programs that we have, Pathways, Connections, and RISE. And can you just maybe speak for just a couple of minutes about what those programs are and, and how, how they've been? Have they been successful? How they, have they integrated and kept, kept students here and sure. connected? Sure. Just in general terms? Yeah. Uh, pathways would be, and we actually have two tiers of pathways, but those would be for students who are on the lower cognitive level, low average cognitive mm -hmm. level. And for some of those students, they receive instruction directly in the pathways classroom. And then they push out into general arts, of course, and sometimes other content area classes as appropriate. But they often receive, especially math and English, in the pathways classroom from a special, special education teacher. So that's Pathways. Connections is for students on the autism spectrum. So it's for students who can certainly participate in content area classrooms in the, in the larger classroom, but sometimes need pragmatics. They need support with social interactions and so that they have a home base where they can go to if they're having a, a particular day that they're struggling, they can go to their teacher and feel safe and supported. And then RISE is new this year and that's for, for it's substantially separate program for students on the autism spectrum who are unable to go out for all of their content area classrooms. So they receive uh, a significant amount of their instruction in the classroom from a BCBA and they, a, a lot of applied behavior analysis has done their discrete trials, helping students build their communication skills and their, and their independence skills. So those are, are the three specialized programs. And then of course at each grade level we have students on individual education plans who just require inclusion support or academic support. And I think. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't answer the other part of your question. One thing I think we sh <clears throat> should consider doing down the road, and it's part of NRPS 2021, is program evaluation and, ha and, and take a look at the programs and see how they need to be adjusted. Cynthia Conant and I have had discussions about what that might look like, but take a look at what's working, what's not working, and then make adjustments as needed. But certainly I would err to the director of PPS for those changes as she's the special education expert in the district. But in, in, so at least one of those, the RISE program, it's likely without that program, we're going to be seeing students from that program will be out of district. Absolutely. What about the other, the other two, the same thing? Do you think they require a level of service that without those two programs, those students would likely be at placed out of district? Yes. And so we're talking a fairly good number of students, correct? Yes. Certainly enough that justifies the cost situation like you just said. Yes. Even and that's not the driving factor. No. It's about in-district programming that right. we believe is best for those children. Exactly. Yeah. Our goal it's is a byproduct of o over decision over like twenty. That. Right. But our, our goal is to try to keep as many students within the community, Correct. with their friends, with their peers, exactly. etc. Exactly. Which is and if, I think if a lot you of if you did attend any of our concerts, you would see and even our, our productions. We're a very inclusive school yes. and welcome all students to participate to the degree that they can and it's wonderful to see to see everyone just come together and, and be able to perform and feel yeah, like they're included. Saw that in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. I, that, so that was yeah. that was great. Anything else for Kathy? Great. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. LaPrec. Thank you. Right, you know, into the high school's improvement plan, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to present tonight. Uh, just very quickly, kind of similar model to uh, what we saw with the middle school, just an opportunity to, to see the members of our uh, school improvement uh, school council. Excuse me. Um, four four new students uh, on our uh, school council this year. Two uh, freshman students. Uh, Alexis and Lizzie, Lizzie Barrett, and two juniors, Eva and Tia, uh, and they've been a great addition. Um, unfortunately not on our list, uh, as he was not able to kind of finish the year out, was our um, community representative, Dave McLaughlin. Uh, but we had, we've had uh, great parent representation, and two of our uh, school council uh, parent uh, members are here, so thank you. Um, and uh, it's a you know it's a good team. Um, it was nice that we had uh, you know uh, an opportunity to to, to get some more uh, consistent representation and 
we've had that happen. Highlights from 1617. Uh, one of the things that I, you know, there's a couple of things that we could have a number of these slides. <laughs> um, so in an effort to kind of, you know, present uh, more of a concise list, but nice to have at the top of the list something that I, I think is extremely important is that um, two of our new hires in the special ed area, in, in fact, a third um, that I uh, met with recently, uh, have a dual certification in a, in a uh, core subject area. So to have a special ed person who is in a classroom setting in a, an inclusion or co-teaching model to also have the, uh, the licensure to uh, teach that subject area is a, is a tremendous benefit for that for that student population, for our <coughs> programming. Uh, so I want to highlight that. Additional uh, items here, the uh, curriculum work that's being done by the English department and the math department, I'll focus a little bit more on that in a bit uh, later on in the uh, presentation. But some of the assessment strategies that they're working on with uh, common assessments and, and common rubrics in the English department and in the math department with uh, the new online curriculum and the formative assessment strategies that they're using that the that the online curriculum offers and you know certainly it's a kind of a staple in, in education that the the data will confirm that students that are getting uh, kind of immediate feedback are um, more responsive and more engaged and that um, that online curriculum uh, helps uh, in that in that experience so that's a great benefit uh, thanks to the Parents Association for their continued support in our enrichment programs. We had Ed, Ed Garrity uh, present to the freshman class and Chris Heron present in a school-wide assembly. Uh, again, I can't uh, thank the Parents Association enough for their commitment to, to student enrichment. Uh, and those were certainly different uh, <laughs> presentations, but uh, tremendously powerful. We also had uh, John Morello uh, present as well, and uh, he presented to the juniors and the seniors. So just great, uh, great support from the Parents Association. Our freshman advisory program uh, continued again. We've got uh, subgroups kind of working in stress reduction and mindfulness with, uh, with our school adjustment counselor. Our guidance program remains committed to uh, the Naviance program and uh, family connections and offering uh, tutorial videos. In fact, uh, Mr. Rosa, uh, I'm sure will be uh, Continuing in, you know, in his new role as the uh, uh, school counseling um, coordinator for K-12, the uh, change team was in its second year uh, in 16, 17, offering tech support and, and tech uh, projects. Other items from 16, 17 continued to our cooperation with the middle school, with, with Kat, which Kathy mentioned, and again, um, you know. Finding that uh, that uh, most efficient and effective way to use the building to get as much access to, uh, of the building to as many students as possible, and, and that just the the great lines of communication that exist between certainly the high school administrative team and the middle school administrative team. I couldn't uh, couldn't ask for anything more from, from Kathy and Mike. Uh, very happy to say three straight Highland trophies, um, and again that's a Cape Ann award for. Uh, academic excellence, athletics, and sportsmanship, and uh, certainly a feather in our cap to have won that three years straight now. They might change the rules so we don't win it. <laughs> Move us up a division. It's something, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be surprised, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and, and again, to have three uh, straight years on the AP honor roll, um, and again, that is indicative of uh, more individual tests um, that are taken during the AP and an increase in overall score. So an increase in number of tests that are given and an increase in the overall average score. So another, um, just, a, just a, an opportunity to recognize the amount of work that's being done in the classroom uh, and the dedication of our faculty to not just students that are uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, a, a transcript in a, in a college um, as a goal that is, is a standout opportunity, but those students that are, that are not uh, bound uh, 
or limited to what class they, they may uh, enroll in um, because, you know, they're told, being told you can't take an AP class. Those classes are wide open. It's open enrollment. And I think to a person, um, students would talk about the, the benefit that they've had from that course, even if they scored lower on the, on the uh, exam than they wanted, um, the, the, the feedback has been tremendous. So that's certainly uh, something I think that uh, we should all be very proud of. Certainly I am. Um, new, the new, you might recall, the new uh, club we had this year, SEED, um, an Alzheimer's awareness uh, chapter on campus has been uh, quite active. Uh, as has our, you know, kind of, it's a staple uh, uh, item here for our, for our student council. Um, very active in, the, uh, in New England uh, and in Massachusetts. They have returned to their uh, gold book of excellence status, which they uh, just missed last year, but have gone back to, uh, to the gold rating. So that's uh, another feather in their cap as well. And always nice to recognize that uh, the, the girls spring track, uh, now back-to-back -back champs in Division IV. Um, and I want to be careful to say that's three out of the last four years, so we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. But I'll, I'll also, um, again, as I mentioned, a couple, uh, you know, trying to get as many things on the, on the uh, highlights list here as I could, but also to, to kind of keep the program moving along a little bit. Uh, sing that thing. Uh, and a great, uh, a great fall with uh, Oliver from our Masters team and uh, from the uh, notorious uh, group on Channel 2 with, uh, with that competition. I, I hope you uh, were able to see that. It was great to see the kids performing on, uh, on TV. Um, and just to go back to the student council for a minute, we do have two students in Arizona on um, student leadership opportunities through, um, through that group. And before I get into the specific highlights for next year, one more, um, one, of my, one of my summer projects on the, on the, the website is to get uh, a short little uh, kind of a timeline put together of our mock crash and the amount of work that went into that program and, it, and it, an unbelievably um, powerful experience for um, for our juniors and seniors in the uh, in the mock crash, which was out here, and uh, maybe you recall the helicopter landing uh, just outside the lower parking lot there. But um, that was a uh, to, to have that return to our to our kind of student enrichment and programming. The amount of work that went into planning that. Many thanks to to the the number of groups, the uh, fire department, the police department, to Claudia Brown, to Allison Kane, uh, to the uh, med flight team. Tremendous. Highlights for 1718, um, and we just talked about this. Uh, the RISE programming will begin uh, at the high school in 718. We have a, a board certified behavioral analyst on our staff for next year. Um, and uh, this, this kind of uh, obviously is a, uh, confirming what we spoke about moments ago and the idea of keeping as many in-district students connected to their school and their home school. Um, so we have a, uh, we'll have a population at the high school, in addition to our connections uh, and pathways, students. New courses for 1718, honors comparative anatomy and physiology, honors genetics and bioethics, the robotics academy, and the modern history through film. These courses were proposed earlier in the 1617 school year and are, uh, and will be running uh, in 1718. Uh, they've got, uh, They've got some good numbers. Our, our third common application boot camp is scheduled for August 8 and 10, um, thanks to the guidance department. The social studies department literacy uh, initiative continues, and you may recall that we uh, spoke about that back in December, and they're kind of reading across the social studies curriculum. Our bridge program it will continue in 1718, and that's been a tremendous uh, opportunity for students that uh, might be experiencing um, attendance issues or chronic uh, absences or some health issues that might keep them out of school, otherwise get them an opportunity to be um, in the school and, and in an academic and also uh, supportive setting and, and getting some counseling uh, as they may need. 
Uh, we've got, we just met with the, um, the Bright program coordinator, and Bright is the, um, is the organization out of uh, Wellesley that essentially started uh, these, these bridge transition programs. Um, so we work with them and provide them uh, uh, some data based on our, on our experiences, and they've been able to give us kind of a, um, uh, a rating scale based on a rubric that they use to monitor our, our program's effectiveness and to offer suggestions. So a very positive uh, year in the bridge and in its first year. Uh, and we anticipate increased enrollment in off-campus uh, internships for the 17-18 school year. Uh, and I really, I, I, you know, I couldn't say more about that opportunity for students um, to, to be in those internships and those experiences. So um, a lot on the docket for 17-18. And I'm sure there's a lot of questions and things that might be in your mind right now, but I'm going to continue on and uh, just speak about the goals. So we have two-year goals. These are, the, these are the same goals that we had in 16, 17. We want, we'd like to see the goal as a two-year goal. Um, and you know, not that, you, <laughs> not that you cannot read on your own, but that first goal talks about staffing and how do we get that best educational experience for, uh, for our students with respect to personalized instruction and uh, support and uh, identifying uh, what might be obstacles for students. Uh, and, it, and that comes down to staffing in a, in a variety of ways. Uh, we're, at a, we're at a place where our numbers are, are, are certainly not going down. In fact, we have uh, a, a, an increase, um, a slight, but albeit an increase in enrollment anticipated for 17-18. Uh, with, the, with the same number of uh, uh, teachers on staff. So um, it'll be a bit of a challenge, but um, I, I think as we just saw that, that people do a tremendous job. Enhancing the educational program uh, around curriculum instruction assessment, and again, providing students with the skills they need and the challenges to meet the 21st century uh, demands and, and uh, what kind of uh, college or career readiness uh, path they may choose. Uh, again, with, uh, with our curriculum work in math, in English, in uh, science, we anticipate as the science curriculum, uh, you know, common core standards move through the middle school, we'll be prepared to make those changes. Uh, so, I, again, our uh, curriculum specialists are working hard to stay focused on their department, department goals and what changes they may need to, uh, to look at uh, to ensure that we have this kind of enhanced programming and experience for the students. Goal three, NRPS 2021, as a guiding document, and uh, not only that we, um, again, look at what, uh, what our specific students and programming need, but how does that fit with the rest of the district and kind of understanding that, you know, while, while it's the high school, it's not the only school. Uh, so certainly uh, the, the high school's input in this document, I think, is, uh, is very valued and, uh, again, serves as, a, as an important document in kind of guiding how we proceed. Goal four, extracurricular programming. Um, and I think, again, we've seen the importance of these type of uh, commitments in, in some of the highlights. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about, uh, you know, again, the maskers with uh, Brief Encounter Advancing in Drama Fest. In the last couple of years, we've had, um, we've had our performances, uh, you know, move through the uh, certain specific rounds in Drama Fest um, in the, uh, the Theater Guild. So uh, that's one small example, but again, uh, extracurricular programming. We have uh, students in gymnastics now. We've, we've joined a co-op in um, skiing with Haverhill. So there's a lot going on in, in those extracurricular areas. Goal five, expand the use of technology as a teaching and learning tool. Uh, again, I would go back to uh, the math department in formative assessment. Uh, math dedicated Chromebook carts specifically for the math department. I think Ms. Um, O'Connell spoke about kind of the importance of having that technology that you anticipate using right there at the ready for students. 
Uh, I would say that there's no real change in, in what, the, uh, what the work is for the teacher, um, certainly what the work is, you know, um, around the content and the student. The experience um, is essentially the same work, just different students, different content. Uh, so that reliance on that technology to have it in math, those kind of math-specific Chrome, uh, Chromebook carts is, is great. Goal six, we talk about the, uh, the two-year progress report with our NEASC accreditation. We completed our two-year <coughs> progress report. We submitted that. It was accepted. Uh, they, the NEASC has responded with a special report that they are looking for in September that addresses, uh, as asking the school to address if we do not have the um, advisory model advancing beyond grade nine, how then do we ensure that students have an adult that they feel connected to? What's our process for that? So um, while we have a large number of students involved in clubs and a large number of students involved in, uh, in extracurriculars, we want to make sure every student has an opportunity to be connected to, another adult, to an adult. So we have uh, requested uh, some feedback from students in a survey. So grades uh, 10 and 11 took a survey to talk about how truthful that statement is for them. I have another adult that I can feel connected to. And based on the feedback and the data from those two grades, um, there's probably about 12 to 15 percent of the students that are saying they can't readily identify. They don't feel like they can do that. So um, not an overwhelming number, but a number that we want to be mindful of. Uh, so I'm, we'll be looking to uh, address that with uh, some strategies. And I, you know, I think there's a, certainly some some opportunities with PowerBlock and uh, and you know some other some other things that we can look at to to feel like that piece that uh, that the advisory model is so focused on is uh, covered at our school for all, all students, all 802 students, um, and not just grade nine. So that's, uh, that'll be reported uh, back in before that September deadline. Goal seven, again, working collaboratively with the middle school. Uh, I think we've, we've uh, given a number of examples about how that's going and very well. Number eight, uh, continue to meet the provisions of the Common Core Standards for English and Math. I, again, um, those are, you know, that's a goal that, that we need to keep uh, on our list uh, as an important piece of, of, of the work that we do with respect to MCAS and things like that and the curriculum, the Common Core curriculum. In goal nine, uh, again, emphasizing the importance of the educator evaluation model and uh, ensuring that that's, a, that's as positive as it's designed to be. I will tell you that the, the opportunities to speak with teachers about the work, about the specific goals that they've developed out of self-assessments um, that are either individual goals or team goals that, that they might work with across the department um, or somebody else from another department that they uh, may have a shared um, specific interest in a very, very meaningful conversations and, and the meaningful work that goes into that, that model of education, ed, educator evaluation. Um, and that's going, that's going very well. So those are kind of our three major uh, presentation areas. The highlights of 1617, what we're looking for, for in 1718, and our nine goals. I'll open up to questions in a second. I j just want to make two quick statements. Sure. Um, one is any increase at the high school is too many students at this point, given the population there. We have plenty of room, but we have a lot more students there than, you know, yeah, we probably- Yeah, house. <laughs> exactly. Uh, number two is, you know, the, the high school is doing very well in um, turning out college-ready and world-ready um, young adults into, whether it's North Reading or, you know, the service or college, wherever they're going. Um, I think it's a shame that the budget restrictions have caused the community, the administration, and the school committee to consistently shortchange the high school in terms of the staffing. Um, it's, it's not right. If I was here this year, I would have voted against the budget. 
because it's just not right. But those are my only two statements. <laughs> I think you're doing a great job. The high school's doing a great job, training out great kids. Thank I'll you. start over this side this time. Jerry or Scott or Janine. Hi, thanks, AJ. Sure. Um, a question in regards to the freshman advisory program. Yes. Um, do you work with Kathy to um, co collaborate um, what she uses in her, the middle school? Well, for the social and emotional, you know what I'm saying? We, I, I, yeah, we, I think we have, a, I have a sense of, of, that, of that programming. I don't, um, I would say that, uh, it, you know, what, looking having conversations specifically around what she's doing and around what we're doing I mean I, mean, I think I, I think that would be a valuable conversation but with the with the advisory model that we have in the freshman year that, that's a uh, there are uh, kind of module components uh, that's a curriculum so to speak about uh, specific goals that we want to see the freshmen participate in and, and specific goals we want to see them building um, you know I think at the freshman level and then kind of moving into that it's that sophomore year that that we have opportunities and then that's what the data is showing us is that there's students are responding with um, very you know very uh, I will say that with the numbers when we talked about that the, the survey question was essentially to what degree is this statement true there is another adult other than my counselor at the school that I feel that I you know helps me in pursuit of my goals not true, somewhat true, true, very true. So with that not true at about 10 to 12 percent, and then that somewhat true, true and very true, though that, that true and very true are probably 65, you know, it's probably like 30 and 30 and 35 percent. Uh, and that, uh, and that's, that's great, uh, 10 and 11. Uh, so, with the opportunities to, for students to get connected with clubs and activities and advisors, and again, that, so the second question is, the person that I feel connected to is a teacher, coach, uh, administrator, you know, you kind of, you, you pick it, a power, uh, power block teacher. Um, so I, I think, you know, for us, it's, it's that, that, that population that's, uh, might be, <coughs> not a, unable to say at least somewhat true. We kind of have a sense of who that is, and um, we, can, we can really kind of identify almost at an individual level where to go. But I think the, the solution for us is to look at Power Block as a model across the board and say, what are some other things we can do within this time to make sure that, that there's at least somebody you know, who's building on that or he's starting that relationship a little bit Okay. Um, yeah, because I was just curious as to where Kathy is um, very focused on the social and emotional, it would seem almost like a, a, a nice transition to have that in the freshmen because they're so used to it from having been middle school. So as they transition in, it would make sense. So that's, I was kind of wondering if, if you kind of go back and forth a little bit on that so that that percentage can go up from maybe 10 to 12% that don't feel that connection because you know they might have had it in middle school and they come to high school and all of a sudden it's like you know all new territory. Yeah, so we're right. So we're assuming that we're we're saying that the freshman grade nine is connected because they have an advisor. Right. So it's that kind of like making sure that that leap that nine to on. ten. Okay. And in getting them you know kind of connected to something at the high school is uh, is, is is more effective. And then something just totally opposite um, th is is the mock crash done every other year just because the juniors and seniors see it, so you wait another? Yes. Yeah, okay, that's, that's so it's always idea. junior and that's senior. That's the design. Okay. I know Julie had a follow up on- um, On the advisory yes. program. So I've expressed my feelings in the past that it should be a 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade program. So I find it interesting that the accreditation board has now brought that up as to how we're addressing those needs you know, at all grade levels. Is there any plans to expand the program because I feel at the 10th and 11th grades, especially for prepping for college, um, I don't think 
a lot of kids make great use of meeting with guidance counselors on their own. And I think kind of a, um, a small group setting with an adult, with whether it's a faculty member, but I think someone in that advisory role would be very helpful. And I know I have friends that live in North Andover and they actually have advisors that stick with the same group of kids all four years of high school. And I've heard nothing but rave reviews come 12th grade, the connections that those kids have made with that particular faculty mm. person. So I was just wondering, it sounds like there isn't a plan, but could that be a plan? Because well, I, I think it's a very important piece of high school. I would say I wouldn't say there is. I wouldn't say there isn't a plan. I, I so when the uh, NEASC has has always kind of had that's the expectation. They this model, you know, was was developed, and they had felt that it was something that they wanted to see, you know, every every school right. account for in some capacity. Now. Initially, they had um, they had said, "Really, this is what the model needs to look like." And recently, with some with some new language changes, they've kind of backed off on saying it's a one size fits all model. And we're going to lead, let each school kind of identify, and you know, through their own uh, you know self assessment, self analysis, who are we and what works for us, um, to have a little more variety in how you might solve that problem of saying, you know. Um, how do how am I you know how am I sure that every student's connected with with at least another adult other than the counselor? Because I think that percentage, that ten to twelve percent, like that scares me. That that should be zero at this point, well, you know. I, and and I, I, I think that's something I, that we I, need I would to say that just because you're you you know we might say to the freshman you have an advisor, but are you connected to that person? They might say no. Right. So so there's no guarantee that just because the model's in place sure. that everybody's going to say it's worked. Sure. So. You know, I feel that the plan moving forward, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to give the impression that there's no plan moving forward. Sure. We're collecting the data. We're looking at what the data, you know, is, is, uh, is telling us about where the areas are that are strong areas. And where, you know, if there's a certain percentage that's not feeling connected, what are we doing about it? I think in the short term is to say, you know, we, we, might, we might look at something and say, hey, you know, th you know there's, a, there's a pocket here. All these kids are, you know, for, for whatever reason, happen to be in this subgroup or in this section. So let's let's work right there. Um, and again, so this is this is numbers moving forward. Uh, I think it's encouraging, certainly on, on my end, to say, well, you know, it's not 25 percent. You know, it's not 30 percent. It's a it's a it's a small group that I feel like in Power Block um, is an opportunity because that's kind of what we're using with advisory anyway. Mm -hmm. In Power Block is an opportunity to to, to uh, begin to create this connection. You're not in, you're not in the same power block. And again, it's a, it's a little bit of, you know, how how valid is the data? We want it to be obviously as valid as we can. But just because I'm I'm not in Mr. Connolly's power block anymore, now is he not my advisor anymore? Right? What you might say, well, of course he's always my advisor. Right? You know, that was great. And I might say, well, he's not my advisor. How can I count him as? So, you know, I think there's a little bit of that too. But we'll uh, there's there's certainly some some real opportunities to, to, to address it. And I'm, 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 not, uh, I'm not, you know, overly concerned that it's not gonna be something that we can, we can handle. Great. I, I, I think it's extremely important that, you know, every student feel that they have another adult they can go to outside the home. I think it's also impossible to ever have that at 100%. Um, I'm also gonna guess that a gating factor, if we really wanted to do this, would be budget, because I think staff would be I would guess we might need more guidance counselors or we might need more staff to, to implement something like that. I think it would be great. Um, you know, it, it, that's the model they have in college, although most college kids don't have as much of a need as a, for a one-to-one for -one advisor as maybe a you know, kid going through a hard time in ninth or 10th grade. You know, a lot of times you hope the kids in college are more mature and can handle it. Although I can say that, you know, a lot of students do use their advisors. So, I do hope, you know, and I, th I think hopefully you have some plans as, as how we can do that without initially going to a one-to-one -one advisor at all levels. Can but I, I then would say sure. at some point maybe, you know, we might want to look at that and what mm. that would look like and what it would require. There is, there is if you don't mind me, no, okay. there, is, there is a budgetary consideration to that because there were curriculum, there's a curriculum that had to be designed when we first in instituted the freshman advisory. So there are some financial implications. I don't think that they're so significant that we can't 
overcome that. But now that the data has just been collected, you know, I think that's a, a good first step to seeing, you know, where is it that we might need to make some adjustments to, um, to make sure that, you know, I'd like to see that number get, if not to zero, as close to zero as possible. I think at a, as a first crack on a data collection, I, I think it's a good number. I really do. I think to say that somewhere in the area of 88 percent of our students feel that at this time that they have are connected to an adult in the school is a good number and certainly is a first first year baseline so. uh, AJ thank you I want to thank the members of the council too Marcy and Deanna are both here and uh, thank you for your, your hard work um, AJ what are we doing now for SAT preparation uh, what are we doing now for SAT prep yeah well so we, uh, we offer a course at the high school that students may enroll in uh, we have um, you know, uh, worked with um, uh, Summit. Summit, Summit Educational Group, excuse me, uh, in the past and offered uh, programs through that Summit could run through the school. Uh, I mean, I, and, you know, the SAT, um, the work around kind of preparing for the SAT is, I don't want to say limited to solely that class. I mean, I think there's, there's vocabulary strategies and and things that happen in, in English classes across the board in math, um, you know, uh, math uh, applications that happen typically in a math class. Uh, I think the SAT, I mean, certainly the SAT numbers have been going up. Um, and, you know, the new SAT is out now for, uh, you know, this will be kind of its second year going through, so it's second cycle. Have we so adjusted the class, the, the prep class, oh, yes. to the new, oh, yeah. the new test, obviously? Yes. What's the participation rate in the, uh, the class that we offer? And that, um, how many enrolled, how many enrolled, say? Yeah, yeah I'd say, I'd say, you know, so we split the semester. Yeah. So I'd say 20, 20, 22 a pop, so maybe That's 40 it. to 45. Should we be doing more to get students? Well, I mean, some students feel, I mean, again, we, we want to let the let them take the courses that they want to take yeah um, and it's restricted to juniors only it's, so. it's, a, yeah, right. it's a juniors only class so it's we about might 25 percent of the class yeah so we I mean, you know I think those conversations we certainly have them with students in the guidance uh, department and some students might say yeah, I'm doing this independently on my own or I'm, I'm looking at this or I'm looking at that or I'm taking three AP classes I'm not really concerned about the SAT so um, you know I, I think uh, I, I think we're we're, we're, we're looking to address it, and I think in the, in the most rational way we can without making the students feel that, that, that they're, they're going to be overwhelmed by this test when they see it. On, on page 12, I was looking, and, and you were talking about uh, staffing objectives. Mm -hmm. And one of them was to maintain, maintain science laboratory student teacher ratios not to exceed 24 students and to support staffing to attain English language arts classes not to exceed 20 students. Uh, realistically, how close are we to those goals? Well, I'd say we're. we're, we're for, for the lab, the lab uh, science classes, you know, on average, we're we're very close. Um, for for say the chem um, and the physics on on the and the science electives, no, not 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 no. not not close. <laughs> uh, what about the the English language? No, I would say we're over that. We're Consider well over it. Oh. Yeah, well over it. Okay, um, and. I'm very familiar with the participation rate in athletics because I'm on the athletic subcommittee. Uh, are we seeing the extracurricular um, participation stay steady or increasing? Well, I think with new clubs like you know, like we've we, well, like we've seen, um, and in, in fact, there's uh, there's there's a, a couple of students that have met with me at the end of last year that we kind of spoke about with a with a new. Uh, not necessarily international travel, but just international club that that's, you know kind of wants to have a more global view. Uh, so I would say, yeah, you know, absolutely. So overall, we're it's such, a, yeah, it's such a it's such a, a vibrant student community, and the students are are so uh, I think just prepared to be engaged in something that interests them. Um, that yeah, that, that, you know, there's there's, there's I, I'm not. Aware of any kind of drop off and you know uh, enlistments for any uh, student clubs and activities. And, and last, we introduced a few new courses last year, as we do every year. Um, how is the participation rate and the acting and stagecraft, the advanced placement music theory? Well, so so those are interesting classes because you know you, you kind of get into that that uh, area where you've got a a strong uh, maybe intro level class. 
and for the students that really want to go to that, that you know, do we offer do we offer another higher level course for that class? And if we do, how many of those kind of committed kids want to take it? And unfortunately, sometimes you know you might have a great class, but there's four other five other great classes that are competing against it. I will say, we, you know, with the um, with say the video production class, which we offer at the high school, you know, and, and as Ms. O'Connell talks about, kind of, you know, where where would we take a class like that? Um, when there's a, you know, it's kind of like the Mandarin one dilemma. Why am I signing up for Mandarin one when there's no Mandarin two? Uh, so, I mean, I think the students that, and we're, you know, we're, there's um, there's some nice work being done with uh, Dr. Daly and with the, you know, uh, discussions around with the guidance department around kind of how do we get students to a place where they can um, start to look at creating a uh, an academic program that's one that they can kind of you know really use to market themselves never mind just say hey, this is going to get me into the school but it's really going to kind of put me on a tailored path to where i want to be so some of these new classes don't necessarily take off maybe some of them do not okay. some of them do not all right okay but they, but they but it, but, it, but again in general i will say the um the comparative anatomy and physiology huge signups the modern history through film very popular good um good. You know, in the in the robotics academy, popular. Good. So, again, I think teachers are responding to student interest, putting the course out there. It might just take a little bit to get yep. to get it up and running. Yes, go ahead. So I'm going to put it out there because I've heard a lot from the community. What is the deal with the tardy policy? It was referenced to graduation, and I just want, do you feel that there is an issue, that there's well, not enough communication for parents, for <laughs> students? I will respond to the okay. tardy. The tardy policy has not changed since I've been here. Okay. So it's the same tardy book. What's in the handbook was in the handbook in 2010. That has not changed. I think it might go back. Oh, it goes back. Way back. So I'm just going back to me. I'm just wondering. No, I don't have a high schooler, so I've never been through it, but I've heard nothing but... So, questions about it and concerns. So I, I just yeah, I, want a, a better understanding well, of so why we, that is happening. Do you, do you want this? How can I best answer your question? You want the whole specifics of the tardy policy, or or, or perhaps how there's been issues in you know is there a way to fix whether it's communication with well, parents so I would say or that, something I would say like this. that? Here's, so so school the, the expectation is that you are in your class at seven thirty. That's when. That's when that first class starts. Sure. A block or E block starts at 7:30. So if I am coming down Main Street, walking down Main Street, with you know my my iced cappuccinos, <laughs> and you know, and all of a sudden the bell rings, and you know now you know now Mr. Down says you need to go sign to the office because it's 7:30. Sure. You're not going to be in a class on time. But I was in the but I was in the building. But you're not. You need to be in the class. Sure. So we we would say. You have three tardies that you can kind of use. Well, you know, I the, I got a late start or this that, that 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 are kind of freebies for the first 10 minutes of school. If after 7:45 you come into school 15 minutes late, you've missed the first 15 minutes of your first block class. You are assigned to detention, which is 25 minutes. Might be the world's easiest detention, and that is to say, you missed 15 minutes of class, right? That's in that's that's a significant amount of time at the start of the day your first you know that's going to make it very difficult in that first block to kind of get your you know uh, and experience for, for, for just clarification I am absolutely a hundred percent on board with holding kids accountable as you know students it's just I'm just wondering where the communication with parents like why all of a sudden it has come out yeah I don't know it's a, I won't say it. I'll say this I think we've heard <laughs> I've heard it for 30 years. Yeah. Heard it for th yeah, there's I, no, there's I, no perfect. I guess for me, I have not, I, not heard I'm, much. I'm going to add to it. It's being, or enforced. Or it's being enforced. The policy in the handbook is being enforced. It's a, it's the same policy that's been at least 10 years. I, I think some of the problem, and again, I haven't looked at it in a while because I haven't wanted to. <laughs> um, but I think one of the issues that had resur it's resurrecting itself again, but it came up a while ago. You have the three so-called excused toddies. If per you semester. In, within 10 minutes of, of your class starting. Yep, you have three 
free excuse. That's right. Um, but I think what was happening were, at one point anyway, kids were bringing in notes, and they were just a standard note from home, and they were using those to get excused above and beyond the three. I don't know okay. if that happens or not, but I know that was an issue with people, that kids would just show up late, come in with a note, and okay, you're excused. I don't know if that's happening or I, not. I think that's what that was happening at a very significant rate back, yeah. I'll say, eight to ten years ago okay. when we rewrote the existing policy to limit the notes that just said, you know, please excuse my son for being late today. Yeah. That didn't seem that didn't seem legitimate enough. Yeah. No. But what I can tell I'll say to anybody is the policy that's in the handbook is the policy that's been in the handbook for I'll say eight to ten years and is not it's not being enforced any differently. I would, I would agree. I mean, I think I will say you get three yeah, excused. Think, think, you get three excused within 10 a, sem minutes. a semester, up to 15 minutes three, right. yeah, per three semester, per so semester. six a year. Yeah. And beyond that, get, we like a, a you know a validation of the uh, of the reason. You know, sometimes a, pa a child will say, "I'm late because I had a dentist appointment." Okay, get the de no from the dentist or the doctor or whatever, something right. like that. Right. Right. If, if I'm going to say I had an appointment, if I roll in at eight eight oh five, well, I had a dentist appointment. Well, it's eight oh five. You know, you should have I. I I want to see, did you have a note? No. Oh, well, if you're at the dentist, I think it's a good idea to bring in the note. That'll help you. Especially if you know the policy. You know? So, um, so that, that, seems pretty, that seems pretty simple to me in that if you have a student who's going to be a half an hour, an hour late, and they're going to the doctors or the dentist, to have the dentist say, Joe Jones was here for an appointment at 745 today, Dr. Smith. That seems pretty simple That's, to me. Unless your mother or father's a dentist. <laughs> well, yeah. well that, that, so I don't, you know, to, to answer your question, I think that's, you know, okay. we, it's been said by myself. No, by, I appreciate by that. Mr. Bernard before, you. you know, when he was the principal, and it's the same policy. Okay. We are, we're just asking that students honor it. I think, um, you know, I don't know how many times you're allowed to be late to work, right? We're trying to build good habits. Absolutely. So I do think, Absolutely. though, there is, I think there is, confusion Late with the policy and that some, guys. sometimes parents think well I have a child who's never right. been late for two years and the first time they're late for half an hour or two hours they're asking me for a doctor's note and I guess maybe not necessarily asking for a doctor's note yeah no no I wouldn't say no yeah. but but what I'm saying it does not always have to be a medical note or a correct but what I'm saying is I think parents might get mixed up with the six freebies and they don't understand that the six freebies are only within 15 minutes. That's right. That's it. That's right. And sure. anything over 15 and I, I mean, minutes, I, whether it's the first it's time or the, spelled out. Oh, it's not the 100th time, whether it's the first time or the 10th time, if it's more than 15 minutes, that's you're either correct. negative detention or you, you're better have a real reason why it's more than 15 minutes. I think, I think exactly people right. are, you know, the detention is, is goes right to, I think what you said, Janine, about accountability. It's just, you, you, you were late. We're gonna. We're, you, you owe us Obviously. something. You get twenty-five minutes. <laughs> oh, 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 talk. I'm sorry. If we had detention. You need ah. to never be out. Oh, poor Jimmy. Right? <laughs> it's, it's a. It's a. <laughs> it's a you know, I think the idea behind the twenty-five minutes is no. to just get in the habit of this is something I can do. Exactly. This is something manageable, and I can take care of it. And therefore, it's that. It's you know, I think it's a. It's kind of a relationship builder. Like, hey, you know what? You 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 sat through your twenty-five minutes. Good for you. We're all good. Move along. And and again, for the for the students that that take care of the, their detentions, I mean, you can you can see the them kind of mature along that road of accountability and and, and responsiveness. John's uh, right, though. I don't think it's changed in eight or ten years. That's the oh, idea. easily. It's, it's yeah, the consistency of enforcing it across the board. I'm that's what's ready. really important that it's it, that it's consistent because as soon as you know it, it changes. I'm not worried. Or, no, but I'm going to make a suggestion no, because of my long tenure here, the most questions, that comments, and complaints I've ever gotten have been on the, um, the tardy policy, okay? <laughs> I, I would recommend that somehow you figure out how to call it out every single year. You might have a separate, you might have a, you give each kid a card, a three by five card that printed on it is the tardy policy. The students it's, understand you know, it. <laughs> the students understand the no, policy. They is, know. The kids are told, bring this home and give it to yeah. your parents. It's funny. I, had a, I, 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 I used to, when I was the assistant principal, have exactly that. I used to have the, the, you know, the kind of the student, uh, student attire expectations yeah. mm -hmm. just on a half a sheet of paper, just that. And then um, a 
around the parking. You push that kind of stuff. You go. Be effective. Just, you it's know, simple. And just give them the handout. There it's it is. Just a suggestion. Just so you know, put it in your pocket. You know. Yes. Anyway. You got more. Um, you and they could, excuse me. If there's a question, a parent. Should, Feel free to contact the school administration. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. Absolutely. Not resort to social media first. <laughs> contact the high school administration. Social media yeah. is so much more fun. Mrs. Right. Bailey, do you agree? <laughs> Just as far as your your staffing increases, I saw a band person or someone in the music department that you would like to increase well, for so next year. So those are those are department reports. Okay. That. Uh, when, when a specialist speaks on behalf of the department and talks about things that they would like to have to enhance their programming or that's important for them or as a goal for them, they present it to the, to the, uh, to the, school, uh, the school council. And what I think we do to the degree that we can is recognize the need um, and re report it accordingly. And now that's not necessarily always saying that we expect it's the first thing on the on the itemization of priorities, but we want to honor what that the curriculum specialist knows and sure. and has a sense about the the improvement of their department. I'm just looking for what exactly you're looking for for this coming budget year. Like, what specifically ah, do we need to be I, aware of? Am I throwing of? that out there right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think I, I like the way this is done because it gives us a good right. feel for what the department. Right now, yeah. the, the department may always overstate by one or two people, but it gives you a good feel. For example, mm -hmm. one of the things I noticed in music was, they, uh, the request was a separate chorus director mm -hmm. because you have the theater, you have the band, yeah, right. and maybe mm -hmm. a separate chorus director. When I think about it, is that a full-time position? I don't know, but that kind of makes sense when you look at that. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the way this is done is helpful, and I think that's a good question because um, when you review this, you see a lot of different requests from from the departments. You do. And I, I think, and I think we try to. What I certainly try to say to the specialists is, is we're not making a wish list, right. but we're talking about your program and what, you know, what do you need? Yes. So I have a couple couple comments. So I agree agree what people are saying about this is a very useful document. Um, now I know that. When the budget is created, Mr. Bernard and Mr. Connolly do a lot to, you know, kind of take these requests from every school and narrow them down. It is nice on the school committee to see the, the broader list, but in many ways it's also an indictment because, I mean, saying that we're using a chemistry book from 15 years ago is, is frankly embarrassing when you're on the school committee. And, I mean, I, the one thing I would say is I'd like to see some sort of general standards. I know I know in the elementary we try to say like stick to one to twenty at this level and one to twenty two here. I'd like to see the same thing expanded. You know, I mean we talked about, you know, one to twenty four for science and technology and one to twenty for ELA, but there was no mention of you know, is it one to thirty for every other class or I think our goal is twenty five to okay. twenty five hundred. And and how, how how are we doing on that? And probably, yes. Probably my guess is forty percent. Of that's, all classes that's a fair. I think that's a fair. Yeah, I, I don't have that specific. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not saying, that, but just in general. Yeah. But but then also looking at things like you know textbooks shouldn't be more than ten years out of date, or you know. Yeah. Well, I, I know nothing's ever changed, but. Um. But it, But again, I mean, I, I. It was very useful to see this and read this, but it was, in many ways, also painful to see and read this and. I just want to make sure that we can take some action from this. Um, and my other, my other comment was just a very <clears throat> a quick one, but you you mentioned the new hires were uh, dual certified with special education in a core subject area, mm -hmm. and I guess my question is: is this a is this something we're trying to promote more often? And is there is there is this something we're going to see more in the future? Is is there an intention to when we are able to expand? try to get more, more dual certification and, and in particular with special education in included in, in the school or was this just a coincidence of who the people were? Well, I will say that certainly when we look at supporting the, 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 what's the best model for an inclusion uh, classroom or a co-teaching model and you know, I think we can look at a number of different um, recommendations around the two educators that are in the classroom. 
But it should really be defined by the students and what works best for that student population in that setting. So that being said, if we have two people that we can both say are you know, eligible and certified to teach the content, one may have majored in it and therefore have a lot more experience in it, but one can certainly say, you know what, I, I know this enough to be, to be certified in it by the DESE, um, then we can look at, at, at two content experts, per se, and one with uh, a background in special ed instruction. So what's going to maximize that student's learning opportunity in that, in that moment, I think, is, is the most knowledgeable people that we can put in front of them, and that's what we're trying to do. I think that, um, again, to have uh, the student, pi I'm sorry, the, the, the uh, new hires that we had from, from last summer come in and be dual certified and for us to get a sense of, hey, look at, look at the, the change that we can see happening in, in some of these classrooms uh, and the conversations that the, two, the teachers can have around the content area um, has been tremendous. I mean, I, I've seen, I've seen you know, some, some real good work where we might, uh, you know, typically might say, well, the model might best be suited if uh, these, 17 kids go off with the math teacher and work on this, and the struggling six can work with the special ed teacher and kind of do some remedial work. Well, what about if you take it and you split it and say there's 12 and 12, and you've got a teacher with both smaller groups doing the same thing, and you, know, you have that real heterogeneous uh, you know, classroom with a smaller setting, you know, instead of saying, well, my, you know, my, my, we've got a really high ratio, to student teacher ratio, because we kind of have one, one core uh, expert and one helper. You know, it's a, it's a hugely different dynamic. So it is by design. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Um, I know Mr. Maloney is champing at the bit back there to regale us about stories of Washington, D.C., but I do, we do have a couple uh, parent representatives here, Marcy Bailey and Deanna, so I want to know if you had any questions or comments? To, to Scott's point about being part of this process, there's no doubt that, you know, as parent representatives or community representatives, we are so proud of everything that goes on at the high school, of course, the middle school as well. But when we do meet with the curriculum specialists every single month, and they talk about how robust their programs are, but how much better they could be and how much more depth and quality there could be and all of those types of things. When we get to the budget process and we're here every year and we hear about what one person that we finally get, when we know that there's so many more mm -hmm. people and resources and textbooks and technology that could make these students who are thriving at such an incredible level even more prepared or more qualified or whatever, you want to stand up and scream. When you look up there, you just want to scream because we just sat through an entire year's worth of what we could be doing and what we should be doing. So it's so disheartening to end up where we end up. But again, the students, the administration, the teachers, the parents in this community rise to an occasion every single year and outperform. But um, I have to say that, you know, you're right. This is an indictment. And it's hard to be on a, on a council that knows just how much more they need. But that's, again, what we do and why we keep, you know, asking for, you know, the resources. Because every time we get them, the teachers, the administration, and the students, they perform at such an incredible level. And it's just so amazing what they do. And the one thing I want to say, just as uh, Mr. Lepret was talking about internships, my son Sean did a senior internship, um, and he is still, after his freshman year of college, still working there. And it's been an incredible experience for not only him, but for other people to know that that works. Mm -hmm. And it was great for the company as well. So I just wanted to well, you, an you endorsement of that. Yeah, it's that's an that's incredible program, number. and I hope you do increase it. It's a great program. Thank you. Jerry, Jerry's daughter did. My daughter benefited. Right, Brittany did an internship. Very much, I, yeah. I remember that. She worked at a vet hospital. Veterinary, yeah. Thank you. And we all know it's important. 
Well, I don't want to be repetitive, so I'll just say that I echo everything that Deanna just said um, clearly and, and leave it at that. I couldn't agree more. Um, the one thing that I guess I want to um, question or ask you to look at, in, in, and um, Mr. LaPrat and I didn't have the opportunity to speak about this, but um, in the advisory model and the results of the survey that only maybe 12 or 15 percent of students didn't feel connected in the the stress survey i'll call it for for lack of a better term that had been taken last year and i believe was administered again this year um that was kind of flipped and the the question may not have been exactly the same but when we asked students do you have a trusted adult in the building that you can go to when you have a problem um it, w it was kind of flipped that 20% said yes and 80% said no. Now, it could be who was asked. It could be the time and place. It could be the phrasing of it. But I would ask that maybe you could go back and review those two different surveys oh. and two different questions in tandem to just get a better picture because it confuses me a little bit because it seems like the same question, but I don't have them both in front of me, so maybe they weren't. Two grades. Two, yeah. two grades. So I, I, I just, because I do think that, um, I know it never will be 100%, but to the extent that every student we can get to who feels that they have someone, not only to advise them in college and career and all those you know, routine challenges they face, but that they can come into the building and say, I'm having a bad day or week or month or um, need, need some advice from someone I can trust. I, I can't think of anything more important. So um, that's all. It's been a privilege to serve on the school council. It's been, um, I'm not going to get emotional, it's been an absolute <laughs> privilege to be, have my students in North Reading Public Schools for the last, you know, probably 17 years. And it's, it's been a gift. So I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Yeah. Thank you both. And, and if I could just, thank you too. if I could just thank, thank you both for coming tonight. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always looking for that next thing for them. Um, if anybody have any more questions? Or I, I had just just closing comments. I, you know, common theme, and I think this has run through the last four or five or more of these is more professional development. And there's some really important areas where I wish we had more money to, mm -hmm. you know, some AP course devel uh, uh, development and professional development, etc. Um, and more staff. And I think that's, you know, that's a clear one. Um, Winning a third Highland Trophy, I think, is a great accomplishment. If people realize the kind of schools that are in the Cape Ann League, um, there's a lot of really good high schools in the Cape Ann League, and for us to win that, it's more than just athletics, it's sportsmanship, oh, yeah. Yeah. and it's a academics. academics yeah. And also three straight years in the AP Honor Roll, um, I think that's a great honor, and it's great to see the school committee get back uh, to the Gold Book of Excellence. Um, I said it last week, this class that graduated this year, um, was the most well-behaved class at graduation I've seen in all my years on the school committee. They made a mistake yeah. of just bringing one beach ball. Exactly. You know, <laughs> maybe they didn't have enough funds to purchase more beach balls. And they showed up on time, too. Yeah. They did. They showed up on time. <laughs> and, uh, right. and it looks like they're doing a lot of exciting things as they leave here, yeah. as they leave Speeches here. were good. Yeah. And, uh, it's a great group. It's a good group. They were a great, very nice class. Yeah. That's it. Thanks, AJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you AJ. Oh, no, one more thing. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Maloney, you don't need the, the, you need the screen? No, I don't. Okay. Know. So next we have Mr. Thank Mike Maloney, you. assistant principal at the high school, just returned from Washington, D.C. Middle, middle school, just returned from Washington, D.C. And he's going to give us, <laughs> talk about next year's trip already. As Ms. Uh, O'Connell <laughs> mentioned, the, the new, pardon me? Actually, you know, standing up here because the mic for the cable is here, so they'll be able to hear you. I want to know how long the baseball game actually was. It was scheduled for 315. I'm guessing it went longer. <laughs> oh, the, uh, if the Red Sox are playing, it's four hours. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, the board's yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you for fitting me in this evening. I know this is uh, a little bit early in asking for approval for next year's trip, but it's a result of, of World Stride's timeline. Um, and I actually, I told them we need to go slowly. I said, this is, this is new. Uh, so re two, two reasons tonight, just 
you know, to ask for your approval for the next year. And just to, to recap um, about my experience with, with World Strides, I, I know we, we made a significant change this year, switching from Capital Tours to World Strides. And I can't, um, I don't know if there's enough words to, to, to describe how, how great of an experience it's been for me planning the trip, you know, starting last summer when I, I did my research looking at different companies through, you know, this morning when I, I spoke to Kate, our account manager, about tweaks that we would like to make uh, for next year. Just their, their support and their level of service was phenomenal. Um, we actually had four people working on our account. Um, Kate, who was the manager, Tabitha, uh, who, you know, managed all the rooms and a lot of the logistics stuff. There was Carter, who was our financial representative, and, and Amber, who was, you know, the, the sales rep um, that, that got us on board and, and worked out the plan. So. You know, from that piece of it, that planning piece of it, to the to the on on site people, we had um, you know Jim and Jane, who were our on site coordinators at the hotel. They they greeted us every evening when we came back to the hotel and, and waved us off every morning as we left. Um, just very simple little things that you don't think is a big deal, but you know, checking in a you know 203, you know, 185 eighth graders and you know 18 staff. It's um, you know, just to have the keys separated out into chaperone groups and then into bus groups. It was just easy for me to go, well, here's, Scott, here's, your, here's your group of keys, you know, Mike, here's your group of keys, and then they handed it out to their, their chaperone groups. To, to, you know, keys that didn't work. It was, it, it was such a weight lifted uh, this year. So I'm, I'm very pleased with, with World Strides and, and what they provide us. And I know it was an increase I know that was noted when we did ask for approval. It was a, a small increase, but it was very much worth the money. The hotel was, you know, compared to last, you know, where we were staying previously, it was, it was a five-star hotel. Um, you know, it was out, out at Dulles, it was right on the airport property. And I was kind of concerned because I knew that's a 35, 40-minute ride without any traffic, but there's a, an HOV lane that we get on every morning. And we were in town you know, at us, at us uh, stops in the same amount of time when we were staying in, you know, I think it was Arlington or, or Alexandria. So uh, it was great. Um, you know, the tour guides were, were, were phenomenal. Just the itinerary that they put together, we did a lot more than, than what we had in the past from, you know, even switching some things around. We pushed the amusement park to the afternoon and we did Arlington National Cemetery in the morning, which allowed us more time, both at Arlington National Cemetery and at, at the amusement park. And, you know, just they, they gave us box lunches on, on the bus that day. So for our ride down, we were able to eat and not waste time stopping and, you know, feeding, um, you know, 185 kids. So that's, you know, I can't say enough about, about World Strides and, and what they gave us uh, in, in our, our parent community. Um, the accelerated timeline uh, obviously benefits them because we commit to World Strides earlier in the process, but it also benefits our families where, um, they have a longer time to, to pay the balance of the trip, mm -hmm. and it actually allows more opportunity for them to receive the scholarship funds that World Strides provides because they have a pool of money, and as that, as it gets closer to the trip date, that the threshold for the application, so just say it's it's fifty thousand dollars is, is the threshold, you know, in June, you know, that might go down to you know forty five thousand dollars in August, and so the threshold gets lower. To, to apply for those scholarship funds and to actually to receive some of those funds. So that's two benefits for our families. Um, spoke to Kate this afternoon, our account manager, asking her just, you know, if she could put together an itinerary and just some estimated cost for this year. And she hadn't heard back from the bus company. That's the big, that's the big ticket items. But I did say, you know, what would the increase be? And she says it's usually between one and 2% uh, from this year. So this year was 929, so that's, you know, it's going to be right into that, that, that same area. And like I said, we tweaked a few things. You know, we tried to do the Udvar-Hazy Museum, which is out by the airport. We get stuck in traffic going down, so we got there a little bit late. We, you know, tried to squeeze that in. Probably won't do that next year, um, just because there's a lot to do. And we left early. We left at 5 a.m., so it was a, <laughs> a much earlier start. Uh, so, but just <coughs> tweaking it to make it the, the, the best opportunity for the kids. So. I'm here tonight just to ask for your approval for the, the DC trip and the local trips, which were a success from, from what I heard, and to answer any questions that you may have about the new company and, and what 
what they provide for us. I've got no the questions. The only thing I have is provided, uh, I'm fine provided that if, whenever you get the um, itinerary and cost and also what the local trips are going to be, you come back and just present those to us. So yeah, we, we, I think you have a copy of what we did this year. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the, the, the itinerary is going to look very much the same, okay. just with some, some tweaking here and there. Um, and the day trips will probably be. <laughs> 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 That's what it was like Friday afternoon when we pulled in with the bus. <laughs> yeah. Would, um, Mr. Webster, do you want Mr. Maloney to come back to a meeting, or are you? Oh, no, no. He get, as long as he's submitted to me, to and you, I'll he submit. Have to come back to a Fine. meeting, just, okay. just so the information. So we have the final. And she was hope, hoping to get that. She said, if if I get it by 6 wow. p.m., I'll I'll, I'll yeah. send it off to you. Um, oh, and just another note too, about the support and service that they provide. She, Kate, our account manager. I was actually emailing her Friday mo uh, Thursday morning on our way to Arlington just saying, you know, I'm meeting with the school committee Monday night. Is there any way you could send me just a draft of some estimated costs? And she said, well, I'll see you in 10 minutes. I'm at Arlington National Cemetery to, to meet you just to put a, uh, wow. a, a name and a face together. And so I was talking to her for 10 minutes there. And I said, well, you know, in relation to D.C., where's your office? She says, oh, we're about two hours south. I said, well, you drove up two hours? She goes, well, I have to be be honest my brother does live in the DC area and I stayed with him last night but the fact that she came up to, to meet us I those think kind of touches you mentioned are really important especially the people at the hotel when you check when you <laughs> check in when you're leaving in the morning it's a comfort feeling not only for the adults but for the kids to see the same faces and absolutely the so, kids enjoy themselves so I want to thank you <laughs> from the bottom of my heart <laughs> what an undertaking I would not sleep when I would go to the Museum of Science with my fourth graders the night before. I cannot imagine, you know, orchestrating and keeping everyone safe and happy and excited. Um, nothing but glowing reviews, um, the, the local tour guides that the kids have pictures with and learning about his culture and how he comes up from Mexico to run these tours, you know, those, those personal touches really make a difference for the kids, and yes. thank you. Can I just share a story about McGuire, mm -hmm. if you don't mind? So, uh -oh. Wait, 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 uh -oh. Julie, before you said okay. <laughs> good one, I don't know. Just, how, just a, a, an example of how good our kids are. You know, we, we tell them we have, all have these in place. You have to have a buddy system. You have to be with you know, oh. somebody. Yeah. So we were at the amusement park on Thursday, and McGuire brought a friend up in, um, who wasn't feeling well, because the nurses, they, they sit at a table and the kids know where the nurses are. And um, so McGuire, McGuire was kind of like, you know, now what do I do? <laughs> with the buddy. I, I said, come on, I'll, I'll walk with you and I'll find your friends. And um, so we went for a walk and, you know, they were on a ride and they couldn't get cell service. And it was, you know, McGuire, I'm like, McGuire, you probably don't want to be hanging out with the assistant principal for doing something <laughs> good, right? But it was just the way the kids act, that they, they, they made the kids, you know, really do do us proud, uh, make us proud when they're down there, and the feedback that we get from the tour guides and all the adults that we dealt with are just they're, they're glowing. So it's, it's a testament to, you know, our North Reading families mm. and, and the work that our, our staff does. You brought them all back. We did. It's like the third year. Actually, no, we, didn't. Yeah, that's, that's we, we good. left two yeah. off. <laughs> that was, was pre-planned. So. They, they should be here tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's three years in a row. And I just I did I brought some. Yeah, three years. Um, <laughs> just you know the little things that this company provides. It's just a discovery journal that if you want to just take a look, it's um, just cool. gives the, 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 the kids some information. I, I handed yes. these out last Thursday or Friday to the kids, and it's just some information about the different places that we go that the kids can look That's at. And, um, <coughs> you know, just a Another look. comment before you go. Mm -hmm. Your your updating of Twitter yeah. was so helpful <laughs> to know at 8 a.m. they're heading out. At 12, we're at the zoo. I lived in D.C. for two years. And after a while, I'm like, they're at the zoo. They're at the Pentagon. They're at here. So just to kind of keep in the back of our heads, okay, this is where they're at. This is where they're headed. I think that was greatly appreciated by the parents of the, of the community. Yeah, I, have, I have fun with it. So they made this available to each student? Yes. yes. Wow, this is yeah. It is. This yeah. is interesting. Yeah. And there's actually, there's a, um, there's a place in the back they can write down about their experience. And there's and actually an opportunity <coughs> for them that Catherine Jones is going to pursue through classes about um, gaining some high school credit. Uh, they just have to do a little bit of work um, and be on their own. Again, we're just filling them out as well, um, so it would be an opportunity for them to do some online work. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, but you know, and I don't. And it's accredited by the six accrediting agencies nationwide. So 
Yeah, I just I'm very pleased and, and uh, happy that we went with this this tour company. It's it's good, just like worked out. The itinerary makes me tired. I couldn't imagine doing this for they five came back days. Very, all very, this. very tired. I couldn't. I couldn't imagine <laughs> chaperones on this trip doing this schedule for a week. I know I would be tired. Yeah, the teachers, so Scott. much fun. What? The teachers, the yeah. teachers and principals. And, you know, it's and it's funny too. I had the idea because Dana Cinaretti was with us, a uh, video production teacher, and she had you know, the camera going the whole time. And we were just talking to some kids at some point. And I said, you know, we should create a student's guide. To the Washington D.C. trip. Oh, that'd be neat, and then you could show be it. That great. Show yeah, it. Yeah, show it, and it was funny because the things that we tell kids, mm. they they don't believe us. Right? It's like, don't worry about your roommates because you're not going to be in your room, and when you're in your room, you're going to be tired. Right. It's the first thing the girl, Olivia, said, she goes, "Yeah, I tell you, don't worry about your roommates because you're never in the room." And then another girl piped up, "Yeah, and only pack sneakers, not not Converse, but <laughs> but running sneakers." I'm like, oh my goodness, I think we have a, a we have an idea. <laughs> I, I, do have, I do have one question. Yes. I do have one question because I know that this was an increase over a, a price increase over the other mm -hmm. service, and it sounds like it was worth it. But in terms of the number of students that attended this year versus last year, do you have any idea of like what it was? I mean, was it was it cost prohibitive? Do you did you see a decline in attendance? Absolutely not. No, we had 185 out of 200, and that's okay. typically right around yeah. where you know 90 to. And I will say that there's a lot of um, not only does you know this company provide scholarship money, but the community provides mm -hmm. a lot of scholarship. Yep. We saw money. a lot come in over the years. Yes. I, I, this trip. Just yeah. and I'd have to look at the specifics, but we had fewer um, scholarship requests this year. Uh, this year, um, you know, whether that's mm. a, a byproduct of, of World Strides and, and what they offer, um, but we, we we had very few. They had the whole year. We had built into our, yeah. our um, agreement, you know, reduced uh, trips for, for a, a number of students. So, yeah, I think it was. My experience over the years has been if any student really wants to go on this trip, money is not going to prevent them from going on this trip. That's well, been my experience. The other side of that is money is not what prevents them from going. Generally, it's kids that. Right, kids don't feel really comfortable right, making exactly. the trip. Kathy would be the, the first money. one to say that she she yeah. went in eighth grade. She wouldn't have gone because she was right. just a, a homebody and she would have chosen. Yeah. Yes, there's some right. kids that right. don't want to do it. Just don't want to do it, and that's you know. In, ter in terms of approving, I would just make a suggestion. I mean, if they if they are thinking the increase would be two percent or less, if we said if it's within five percent or four percent, you know, as long as they just give us the number back, it, it we could then. Approve well, it because I'd be concerned about approving it without knowing what the cost is. Yeah, I'm not going to go that way. I mean, I'm, I'm going to yeah, approve it regardless of the cost because I don't think, <coughs> again, you know, I'm just looking at it, so it's about $17.93 a yeah. week that they have to put away to but, but again, afford the trip. If they know. later came back and it yeah. was 20% yeah. more or something, I mean, yeah. be, I'd want to know. I why. guess, I, I, guess I, I really don't, wouldn't support that. I just support a straight approval. Because if it comes back something outrageous like that, so we'll have to Mike's going to be back to us saying, right. yeah. Absolutely. We, gotta, we have a problem. Because there are more than enough companies soliciting us right. Right. for their services. And, and you know, now that we've dealt with a new company, it's, you know. They want to keep you as a customer. Absolutely. They're, not absolutely. Going to, they're not going to go up dramatically on a price this year. You're, you're going to know the price next week. Yeah. Right. I'll know so, the price yeah. tomorrow. Right. If you, I'm not worried about it. I just want to make sure. Yeah. They're just waiting on Yankee bus lines. That's what, what the delay so if, was. if there's no more questions, I'd accept a motion from anybody but Scott to no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding, Scott. <laughs> if Scott wants to make a motion, I accept a motion to approve the Washington, D.C. trip for June 2018. I'd move to approve the Washington, D.C. trip for the eighth grade class for 2018. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thanks, Mike. Thank, Thank you Mike. very much. Good job. Good job. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Get some rest tonight. <laughs> okay. Next, we have minutes. Oh, we got. Oh, yeah. We got. Oh, approve yeah. The, we did it. Yeah. Uh, can I have a motion to approve accept. the middle school improvement plan, please? To accept the right. middle school improvement plan. I move to accept. I move to accept the middle school improvement plan. Thank you, Cindy. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And now, motion to accept the high school improvement plan. Motion to accept the high school school improvement plan. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thanks, Cindy. Okay, next, the minutes. We have uh, a couple sets we couldn't approve last week because we didn't have enough members who were at the meeting. Um, we have the May 1st executive session. <coughs> I was not present. 
I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the executive session on May 1st. So it's got to either be a second from Jerry or a second. Janine, I have from Julie, because Scott wasn't on the committee yet. So, all right, so we have a motion by Janine, second by Jerry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's uh, a, abstain? It's a three, three, zero. Three, zero, two. Yeah. Abstain. <laughs> and then we have the same thing with the May 1st regular session minutes. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the open session on May 1st. Second. For the discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Two Aye. abstains. <laughs> three, three in favor, two abstains. Then we have the, the Scott can't vote on any minutes tonight. We have the um, <laughs> May 30th open session um, minutes. <laughs> I don't care. He doesn't make care. a motion to accept <laughs> the open session of May 30th minutes. Do you have a second? I'll second. second. Oh, I'm sorry, Julie got me. Give Julie for a second. <laughs> Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four, zero, one abstention. And then we have the June 5th um, minutes prior to town meeting. The first two. Make a motion to accept the open session prior to town meeting on June 5th. Do you have a second? Second. Oh, motion by Janine, second by... <laughs> Julie to accept the June 5th um, open meeting minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? One. Scott. Aye. <laughs> Was there a one? And then we have the June 12th minutes. Um, there's one thing on the June 12th that I saw on number three on the first page. It said a meeting is scheduled to take place on Monday, June 12th at 8 a.m., but that meeting would have already taken place since the meeting was the night of June 12th. So it should just say a meeting took place Monday. Yeah, I think you took that from my report, yeah. right? Yeah. Hmm. So other than that, they were fine. If I could have a motion. Oh, Janine, wait, Janine can't vote on these. I can't. I can make but motion, Mr. Though, can I? I? No. But Mr. I Buckley that. can vote there on you these. Go. I move to go ahead, Scott. Move to accept the, the minutes from June 12th. you got to get in practice. 2017. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Do you have a second? Second. For the discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One abstention. Was there a one? Okay. I'm lost. Next, we have our pretty close to end of the year budget update. That's correct. That's correct, Mr. Webster. So in your packet this evening was the June budget report. Essentially, it's summarizing financial activity through about the about June 9th. Um, and you know, as typical, with the reports broken down through expenses and payroll activity. And essentially, not a lot of new information from, from the May report, but at this point, we are in the process of closing out the fiscal year. Um, as you, uh, you know, are well aware, during the, the budget development process, we are certainly in, involved um, preparing and paying um, you know, prepayments for special education tuitions. I, you know, I mentioned last month we had um, plan forecasted during the budget uh, development process that we would reach a, an amount of $125,000 and I'm happy to report that we will have been able to meet and even exceed this amount which should help provide that flexibility that I think will be needed um, to deal with some some additional costs or unforeseen costs in fiscal 18. Um, we've monitored utility expenses throughout the fiscal year and as you can see in the report Happy to report again that all utility expenses are certainly within budget as we prepare to kind of close out the fiscal year. There's still one more, you know, one more invoice where we're waiting um, to reflect activity through June 30th. Um, but we even have some available funds in, in this area to repurpose elsewhere, which certainly assisted with meeting our special education prepayment objectives. Um, we've discussed throughout the year, we did, certainly had some unexpected building maintenance costs this year, certainly around some HVAC and some boiler issues throughout the district. Uh, we were able to certainly manage these costs throughout this fiscal year. Um, the food service program closed out the month of May with actually a, a profit of a little over $13,800, uh, which was a, a great month for, for the program. Uh, mills sold across the district were up on average 6%. Um, which was a which was a great month. Uh, with the month of May, that actually put the program's profit uh, through May at a little over two thousand dollars for the year. Um, so you know that's certainly positive positive news. We will 
uh, certainly look to hopefully mitigate any loss in the month of June. Typically, June is a challenging month with the graduate, with graduation and seniors not being here, and there's a lot of lost operating days with exams and so forth. Um, but we hope to mitigate any loss to keep, um, you know, there's a chance we could break even. Um, so we'll, we'll watch, you know, June closely. Um, you know, the program also captured a couple of additional catering events this month with some athletic team banquets. Um, I thought those went fairly well. There was some good feedback that, you know, we'll look to uh, hopefully expand and grow upon some additional catering events next next school year. I think that we talked about um, when Chartwell is presented, that would be an important piece um, to kind of get over that hump and and operate, uh, you know, at a break-even program. Um, on the payroll side, there was really nothing significant to report. Um, as I mentioned last month, you know, we certainly have some available funds in some of the salary accounts that can be used to repurpose and assist with, you know, um, certainly meeting the special education prepayment objectives. Um, so really, despite some unanticipated costs the district did incur, I do feel that, um, you know, we are in very, you know, solid financial standing to close out this fiscal year and achieve the carryover funds we had planned on during the FY18 budget process. Um, certainly, that you know, the year's not closed out yet. We actually have until mid-July uh, to officially close, close out the fiscal year. So we have about another you know, three to four weeks will we'll be, certainly be a busy time for the business office as we try to get in all the, the final invoices and make some, some final adjustments to some of the open encumbrances to, to close out. But, I do anticipate at the meeting in July that I'll be able to present the final financial report of the fiscal year. And I know if you're looking through the report, you see you know there's a small projected available balance. But I will say, even though we're you know we're looking at we're in, it's June 19th, there will be some some um, adjustments and some increases to encumbrances and even things that might come in over the next few weeks um, that may not be reflected. So I think we'll we'll close out the year pretty close to a. Uh, uh, to a fully expended budget. I just want to, um, regarding the um, food service program, I want to say hats off to Michael, to Chartwells and their staff and all the workers, and to the uh, appetites of the North Reading school children. <laughs> We've gone from a huge deficit and a huge um, subsidy that the school district had to put in to a program that is now um, profitable with half a month left. Now, it may end up not in the black because June's a short month and right. you know we lose the seniors. But I, I find this to be, this was a bugaboo of this committee's forever. And I just find, find this to be a huge accomplishment. And I know Chartwell's <coughs> has done a lot. And obviously with the new facilities and what they're able to do at the high school and middle school, I think that helps also. Yeah. But I just want to thank you, Michael, for, oh, thank for you. Um, no, it's writing been, that. It's been a great getting success. Rid, getting rid of that issue. Anything else, anybody? Well, the only comment I would just say is with tuition being that much more than expected. Oh, no, it wasn't. What? Yeah, that's actually a result of the prepayments. Pre oh, OK, what that's only the prepayments. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, why, that's why it okay. looks like Was it 125 or? So we prepayment? actually are at 250 right now. So okay. we almost double what we budgeted. And okay. we, had, we had hoped to do that. And we do that typically each year as we, um, so that, okay, that is really the, yeah. the okay. reason. But okay. so can you just explain, you're <coughs> prepaying 250 yeah. for next Correct. year? Correct, yeah. Okay. 250. Okay, so. Well, I was going to compliment you and say, great job managing the budget, but never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, if, we, if we don't, you know, don't anybody tell the finance. If we don't know, if we don't do the prepaying, yeah, if that ever happened, oh. uh, we would be in humongous yeah. we would, yeah. trouble the following. Very quickly. We would. Yeah. So, okay, I mean, that's, that's my fear for next year with, with the budget, with so many cuts to the, the, the rainy day funds. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's next year more than anything, we're going to need the quality you know, administration of, of the budgets of both of you. We have the million dollars. It's going to be very tight. And we knew there were some unanticipated expenses that came up at the very end. So we were trying to exceed the amount we budgeted upon that because we, we know what's coming. So yeah. the million is tax. Bell will be paying what tax? Oh, please stop. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anything else on the budget? Thanks, Michael. Great. Thank um, you. No staffing updates, John? No. Bids and donations? We have a few. We do. Um, I don't know. Three, do I believe. Do you want to make these tonight? Sure. Um, I would like to, I can't even say the word. I'd like to with make a motion. I think. Thank you. That would, <laughs> that, would, that would help. With gratitude, an in-kind donation from the Friends of the Hornets Productions 
at a value of $260 to help support the cost for 13 middle schoolers to attend the Massachusetts Music Educators Association Junior District Choral event. A second. Motion by Janine, second by Jerry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. I'd also like to make a motion to accept with gratitude an in-kind donation from the Friends of the Hornet Productions, again, valued at $814 to subsidize the project fashion enrichment program for the middle school students. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And lastly, I would like to make a motion to accept with gratitude an in-kind donation from the Friends of the Hornets Productions valued at $1,750 to substitute a two-part wicked themed enrichment program for the middle school students. I actually saw some pictures of that. I think they had an actress in from one of the touring uh, companies of That's wicked. That's correct. Yep. That was uh, meeting and instructing students at in the uh, Performing Arts Center. Correct. The only comment I have is that I'm jealous. I know. <laughs> Can I have a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So this just this is a fairly new organization in North Reading, a couple of years old, maybe two, three years old. Um, it, it started, I believe, the year that the middle school was in the old high school. So, so this is probably years. concluding its third year. It yeah. has three thousand, almost three thousand dollars in oh, donations, and, they, and they, they've done a lot. Absolutely. More. We know we have the storage bin. Correct. The, um, all the sets and mm -hmm. etc. for the middle school. We're paying for the rights for some of the. Yeah, they're paying for the rights. Very for very the active shows. Shows. Yeah. shows. Do a nice job. Yeah. So um, the last two years they did what Wizard of Oz and uh, Alice in Wonderland yeah. for the two productions. So, yeah. Tremendously appreciated. Subcommittee updates. There are none. There have been no subcommittee meetings in the last week. But coming up, we have a very busy. Um, tomorrow. A busy days. day tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. A big day tomorrow. Busy couple of weeks with uh, subcommittee meetings and uh, events. Uh, tomorrow at 12.30 <coughs> in the superintendent's conference room of the athletic subcommittee. At 4.30 we will dedicate the main um, corridor that connects the middle school, the high school, and to the administrative, um, central administrative offices. We'll need, we, be dedicating that in Charlie Jones' name tomorrow. There will be a ceremony at 4.30. 5.30 tomorrow is the Secondary School Building Committee meeting here. The NORCAM Board of Directors meets on Thursday at 7 at Damon Tavern. Who's on that now? Is that I have to go to that then? Scott Scott. We should probably Do tell I me, huh? I have to go to that? Um, <laughs> should probably tell me that. <laughs> policy subcommittee is, Jerry as I said, Enjoy. I'm, I'm glad I'm not on this committee anymore. It's at June 27th at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. I would early. be sleeping through that. Um, <laughs> finance planning team is August 4th. At 8:15 a.m. in Super 10's conference room, and that's it for subcommittee updates. Administrative report, Mr. Yes, Carter. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Just a couple of quick things. I, I just I felt um, I wanted to give a little shout out to the cast and crew of Madagascar. It was a wonderful weekend of performances. Um, so many people to thank, but I, I do want to call out Mr. Uh, Tatro and Mrs. Mazzoni from the from the little school um, for leading the effort to um, engage the fifth graders from the little schools. It was a wonderful performance, it really was. And then the addition of the first and second graders at the start of the play and at the start of the <laughs> second act they was, out of oh, it was yeah. great. It was really good and just good. And good. I did not attend on Friday, but I understand it was a good crowd. They had a crowd of, over, I would say, over 500. Yeah, and it yeah, was a very crowd of good crowd on Saturday. Yeah. I would say yeah. two-thirds full, anyway, you know, maybe maybe approaching that same I'd number. I'd say it was more than yeah. 500, because it was yeah. just the two cars yeah, it was just the back that were right back. Yeah, it was really, really, really good. So just, to, you know, I so wanted to give them a little commendation publicly. And also, um, Mr. Chairman, you spoke about the dedication ceremony tomorrow. So Charlie Jones will be here oh, uh, tomorrow. Um, we have a, you know, I think a small informal program, but I think certainly it will do justice to um, dedicating that connecting corridor in his honor for um, his many years of service as a teacher and uh, school administrator at the middle school. So um, we have a short speaking program. Mr. Venezia has agreed to, um, oh, great, to offer some remarks nice. on behalf of the committee. I think it, Ms. Brown, uh, Charlie's wife, uh, her, re uh, her request of you. So it should be a nice, uh, should be a nice afternoon. I won't be attending. I have a pre op appointment for okay. my daughter, but please, okay. I will contact Claudia mm -hmm. to extend my congratulations. Any correspondence at all? 
Not from me, no, thank you. I just have one note I want to make. We're not going to discuss it tonight. It's not on the agenda. I did want to acknowledge uh, that the school committee has received a letter from some parents regarding the high school yearbook. And I've had several discussions with Mr. Bernard. Um, there are some issues with the yearbook. I can tell you that the administration is working with Justin's and with, uh, with high school personnel to figure out how what happened happened and also to figure out how we can fix what happened to the best of our ability. I can tell you we're not going to, at this point, we're not going to print a new yearbook. That's not going to happen, I don't think, unless, unless it turns out that Jostens was at fault. And right now, yeah. I don't think Jostens is an issue here. I so we're on a fact-finding right now. We're on yeah. a fact-finding mission. Um, our hope is we don't expect there'll be any extra cost to anybody Correct. to whatever amends we make on this. Um, but that's all. I just want to acknowledge that we did receive, I have received some, the committee received a letter and I've received some additional um, phone calls and comments from parents over the last few days. So I just wanted to, to make that known. And hopefully, I know Mr. Bernard is, is um, I won't say exactly what he told me today, but he's frustrated. He's gonna do whatever he can to make this better for everyone. I think is that's that a true. Fair way to, I, to I think it's it? very fair. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, we will we will get to the bottom of this and hopefully fix things. Yes. No, I, I know. So we're looking at possibly a um, a supplement or just some way to at least. I think this, the supplement plan is has always been right. in place and will be in place. But I think we're we're exploring the pot. I don't know what commitment I can make tonight, Correct. but. I think it has our attention and we're working toward addressing the corrections that need to be made. Um, I just don't know what that looks like yet because it was really only brought to my attention on Friday. So. Okay. Moving forward, future business. Um, we're on a summer schedule. So Scott should be able to make both meetings <laughs> uh, moving forward. We have a meeting July 24th. We have a goals workshop at 4.30. We have a regular meeting at 6.30. And Jerry will be there early for the goals workshop because one, I his like contributions to, are incredible at those things and he loves them. I like to prepare. Yes. I hope the two meetings is enough. I, and then August 28th, we have a second goals workshop scheduled at 4.30. Both of the workshops are in Soup Ten's conference room. And then 6.30, a regular meeting here. And then we get right into our fall schedule once school opens. September 11th. September 11th. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? That I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, motion by Janine, second by Julie. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Aye.